50,070 persons for looking into a box. Is it such a crime? But Lot, he committed incest with his daughters. He didn't do anything. You know that? Lot. Reuben, he had, he, he yes, had yes, sex yes, with his mother. Story. He had sex with his mother. God said nothing. Right. Judah had intercourse with his daughter-in-law. And he had the children, the great-grandfathers of your God, Jesus Christ. He's children of incest. Well. Children of incest. Your great, great grandfather of your God. In Samuel's, he talks about one of the sons of David raping his sister. God said nothing. The other guy, he rapes ten of his father's wives wholesale. And God said nothing. But for a guy looking into the box, he goes and kills 50,070 persons. Is this in the book of God? Is this God okay. talking? Please try this in the bin. I renounce Christianity, man. Yes, you really. You, you just. I don't, I don't question God. He is my Almighty Father. Thank he has given me salvation. No, you now you have to become a Muslim. God, okay. talking. Please try this in the bin. I renounce Christianity. That's all. No, 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 no. I must have it no, back. No, you, said, you said throw it into the bin. Okay, could I have right. it back? No, you can't. Why not? No, you gave it to me. I didn't give it to you. You gave it to me to throw it into the bin. Well, could I have it back? No, you can't. You can't. Please. No, you can't. Can I get on my knees? No. Please, no, I must have no, that no, back. No, no, no. They gave it to me. Move, move. Just to look at the context of the I'm just, just going to wrap these yeah. two down. Because yeah. I've actually got a lot of work to, to do and I don't want to waste your time. Me too. Time. I'm also a very busy man. But I sacrificed my whole morning. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. That's stealing. That's stealing. That's stealing. That's stealing. That's stealing. That's stealing. You see, you took that Bible out. Yeah, no, that it's is, my Bible. That is stealing. Stealing. That is stealing, yes. Like, you see, please look, may I ask yes. for my Bible back. <laughs> you took it from there, that is stealing. I just absented myself for two seconds, and this is what you do. You are a man of spirit, a spiritual person. You said, I renounce Christianity. I'm quoting your words. And it says, throw this in the dustbin. I was joking. I was frustrated. No, no, that's what you said. Now you must be a man of your word. As a spiritual person, you had no right to pick it up. Okay. That was stealing. Please, may I have my Bible back? No. no. Please, to me. no. Give it so to me. Give no. I want my Bible. No. Eight uh, years old. Is that King James? Um, no, it's a new international version. I've got a King James at home as well. Right. I, I use about three different Bibles when I, when I do study scripture. Yes. yes. Um, do you have a Bible? You just your, get, if you want to get your Bible out there, I have my no, 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 Well, I do the same thing, but word for word gets a bit difficult. Yeah. Just in... God, just let me say this. Um, two chapters through about 16 through to about 20, leading up uh, to I the think trial. you're speaking you too fast. I um, think your English is a bit too fast. Oh, for me. Okay. Uh, this machine is an old machine. You know, it takes a little bit. Okay, we'll slow down a bit. Please. please. Um, from chapters 16 through 20, we see that. Um, 16, chapter 16 of John. John, chapter 16 through to about 20, we see Christ has been accused of something they claim he's not, whereas he claims to be the king of the Jews. And then he was tried and then taken um, up to Golgotha and crucified. Just one second. One minute. Is it the same this? I can have a problem. This will come. I'll bring you. Okay. There's one thing I find quite 
quite, um, it wasn't amusing, although it wasn't always this um, gentleman, Amadidat, is very, very militant. Yeah. Where did you see him? Um, no, in the, in the literature, a lot of things. Oh, uh, he got a uh, booklet yeah, on, on, on crucifixion. Yeah, yeah. Oh, crucifixion, yes, yeah. he got a literature he's, on crucifixion. He's incredibly militant. I could imagine him with an AK-47 in his hand. Ooh, he was like, a. Hey. And his, his statements are so, so very, he's like so convicted, it's like almost as if he wants to go to war over it. Yeah, it's okay. Like Jesus Christ. He, he said, you generation of wipers, you whited sepulchres, you wicked and adulterous generation. <laughs> You fools! He said, fools. Say, he he said you one another. He said you fools. He said you fools. Did he? In what context? No, no. But he used In all what this context? Language. He used all this language. Yeah, he but said, it, it, it was. Oh, generation of wipers. You know what that means? Where, where is this? Where, where is it in the Bible? I'm, I'm not familiar with it. I have heard oh, it, but where no, is it? No, no, no. Please don't. Leave. These are expressions which are so common in the Bible, in yeah. the New Testament. You generation of wipers. We we just say this specifically. Now I just want to find a place. Okay. The thing is, can we just get something straight? I'm not coming here to argue. <laughs> no, 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 I'm no. coming here no, just no, no. out of what, my own what, curiosity. No, no. What happens now? It, it seems so strange that you are uh, a Bible enthusiast. Yes. And this expression is biblical. Ye generation of wipers. We no. We just say this. <laughs> You, you, know, you never heard that? Of, you never heard no, that? Not out of, bar, out of the Bible. Well, then, then I'll just find it for you. No, I'd like you to because I don't, I don't know where it is. No. no, this is not like, you know, I'm just, I'd like to know where it is because I don't know. I never you remember. wicked and adulterous generation? Yeah, I know that. Where? I've heard that. Where? I'm, I'm not too sure. I can't remember. I've just read it several times. Right. You fools. You fools. Where does he say that? Matthew 3, 7. Matthew 3, 7. Look for it, my son. Matthew, Matthew 3, 3, 3, 7. Right. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, brood of wipers, who has warned you to flee from the rock to come? Matthew 12, 34. Okay, so I'm just reading reading this. Brood of vipers. You know what that means? So I'm just, I'm just reading the context of the whole scripture. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, okay, I understand. This is John we're talking about, he said this. Huh? John said this. Oh, oh. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness and saying, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But this is who has one, right? Isaiah, right? Isaiah, 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 and John himself was clothed in camels head and Jerusalem all Judea and then were baptized by him. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and said, he is coming to his baptism, he said to them, brood of vipers. Matthew 12, 34. Matthew 12, 34. 12, 34. 12. 12, 34. Brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of abundance of the heart, mouth speaks. Matthew 3, 7. Okay. Right, or else. This one is, and if I cast out demons, my bills is bad. Or else, how can one enter the strong man's house? He who is not with me is against me. Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy, so anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whosoever speaks on so, either make the tree good and is right. Brood of vipers. Now this is the words of Jesus. So where, where are you reading from now? You've lost Verse 34. Me. Verse 34. Yeah. Mm, okay, you brood of vipers, etc. Yeah. Come in. Where's I going? Oh, then you're going for that sign of Jonah, from that sign of Jonah. No, no, no. Or just from verse 34 right through verse to verse 34 verse seven. says, you generation of wipers, in another version, you, it says, you generation of wipers, yeah, I've got you, you brood, brood of wipers. wipers. What, is, what is brood of wipers? Uh, 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 what do you call it? A nest of snakes. Right, yeah. you snakes. Yeah. Is that a very complimentary thing to say about anybody? Why was he saying what he no. said? You, as a preacher, no, I'm in not your congregation, no, no, let's yeah, say, okay, that okay, yeah, right. preacher, to your congregation, they're going off. What about yeah. some tea for this gentleman? I have nothing for me, thanks. I just grabbed a cup of coffee down at a uh, cafe. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. You see, you're talking to your congregation. Okay. 
in other words, you're trying to sell yourself, your ideas, making them to bring them towards God mm, and towards uh, righteousness. Same, but no, I wouldn't. Hmm? You, you address them as you, you brood of wipers. No, I wouldn't. No. You wicked and adulterous generation. Will you address them? Well, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, why did he say this? It's not what he's saying, right, it's right, why right, he's right, saying I tell you what he's saying. I tell you why. The people come to him, there's a master. Look at me, look at me. Yeah, sorry, I'm just... I'm just no, you can't. You, look, the human mind can't do two things at the same time. I'm brilliant. I can do three things at once. No. I'll eat. You must be a monkey. No, work. no, no. It's a monkey <laughs> brain that, you know, you can do this and you can do that. Okay, so I'm listening you, to you. You are lying to me. Because the psychologists say the human mind can't do, can't think two things at the same time. Okay. You can't be listening and reading at the same time. My subconscious is recording what you're saying. Now that's different. <laughs> but now you can't be thinking. Okay. Yeah, you're saying. This is what your psychologists say. Yeah. Right. So now they come to him. Yes. And they said, Master, in the Hebrew language, Rabbi. Yes, Rabbi. Very respectable. Very mm. respectable. We would have a sign of thee. We would like you to show us a miracle, to convince us that you are the man we are waiting for. Okay. Now, to me, it's a legitimate request. Oh, okay. You now, like you come along, you're claiming for a parcel, or if you go, you go to the ticket. post office. For me, the ticket. You see, a uh, Gavan. That's your first name. Yes. A, a registered parcel comes in your name. Okay, yes. Uh, and you go to the post office uh -huh. with a slip. They say we want your identity. Is it a valid request? No, definitely. Hmm? Yes. Because it will be anybody could have picked up that slip. Anyone could take that slip. They want to know that you are Gawan yes. and we want to give you the parcel but we want your identity. Mm -hmm. right? So now you turn on the guy and say you bastards, you know, I am Gavan. I know I am Gavan. You know, the whole world knows me. Yeah. And damn it all, you're asking me. Well, you don't do that. They are asking, there is a valid request. Mm. They are asking, he's asking you for your identity. Yeah. And he's prepared to give you the parcel. But just show me your identity. You are Gavan, then sign in front of me. And I'll get the parcel. And get the parcel. Okay. So, Jesus Christ, he claims that he's the Messiah. The Jews are not satisfied. Okay. You know, yes. with his verbal Sorry. assertion, you know, <laughs> clay. They want some certificate, no. some, some proof. proof. Guaranteed. They want some proof. So, and in their minds, proof is doing something miraculous. That means now, look, what I can't do, if you can do, then I can give you credit that maybe you are appointed by God, like walking on the water, uh -huh. flying in the air, uh -huh. giving light to the dead. Do something, man, that we can't do. And that will be a certificate enough. A sign that he is the Messiah, who he is, who he says he is. Correct, correct. Okay. So, to me, it's a valid request. Uh huh. But Jesus, you know, he, he gets angry, he yeah. gets frustrated, and he says, a wicked and adulterous generation, mm -hmm. seek it after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Yeah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the belly of the earth. Sorry? They want a sign. The first thing is that he had no right to get flabbergasted. You know, he had no right. The man is asking you a simple says, excuse me, sir, can I have a look at your identity? The postman is asking you. Yes. You don't have to go and you know, blow your top and swear and start abusing that guy. He's only doing his duty. These people, they are representative of the people and they said, look, if you are claiming to be something supernatural, the Messiah, supposed to be something supernatural. So in that case, we want to see some miracles mm. that you perform. Something solid. That we can't do. Uh -huh. see? So, Jesus says, a wicked and adulterous generation, in common parlance, in today's language, he would be saying, in today's language, yes. he would be saying, your bastard nation. You know, how we talk today, you know. Yeah, okay. He says, your bastard nation, you know. You're looking for a sign, you want a miracle, mm -hmm. and I'll give you no miracle. 
read it, yeah. read it, read it, read it, read it. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't mean to be like profound, but you've taken everything you said totally out of context. Right, what is the context of my son? Okay, first of all, if you read the whole of oh, this, okay, from verse 22. Right, let me see. Let me see. Verse 22. Now, if you look at the verse whole context 22, of that passage from verse 22 right through to verse 37, if you take that verse, uh -huh. you brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For out of the overflow of the heart the mouth speaks. Uh -huh. If you take that verse on its own, right. yes, I agree with you, but you cannot take that verse and accuse Jesus of anything because, the, because of what he says in that entire context of that passage. He has, he has a reason for saying that. And then secondly, in verse 39, when he answered, a wicked and adulterous generation asks for a miraculous son, but none Sorry, but none will be given it except the son of the prophet Jonah. As for as Jonah was three days, etc., etc., he never accused them. He never said to you, you are a wicked, and gen wicked generation. He said, a wicked generation. He didn't point fingers. He didn't speci specify who the wicked gen generation was. He simply said, a wicked generation asks for miraculous sign. Did, did he, does it say, you who are a wicked generation, or you the wicked generation, or anything like that? He, I don't believe in any way he was pointing or prescribing any of those people who asked him for a miraculous sign as being the wicked generation that he met, that he talks about. And then he says, but none will be given... No, 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 wait, 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 wait. The people who are asking him are a generation. Yes, but does he, does wait, he wait, prescribe wait, wait, them wait, to be wait, that wait, generation? Wait, 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 wait. And that generation is asking for a sign. Yes, sir. So he's now addressing them. An evil and adulterous generation, a bastard nation, is looking for a sign. Could he, have, could he not have also been talking about the generation? Damn it all! You, when that. the guy is asking you for your identity, no, I don't believe that. No, no, stands no, 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 no. When you asking you so for your identity, and you say your government, you know, is laying out such rules, nonsensical yeah, rules, right, right. you are implying that worker for the government is also lumped in. He is working for the government, isn't he? Okay. Right. So, so, the, so the, the, mouth, the, whole government. the guy, whoever comes to you and is telling you, Master, very, very humble. Yeah. Hmm? Respectful. He says, Sir, priest, parson, predicant. He's telling like that. He says, Look, we would like to have a sign from you. Show sure something then. So he says, An evil and adulterous generation, the one who's asking. Yeah. Seek it for a sign. An evil, whoever it is, anyone, he's asking for a sign is an evil, an evil and adulterous generation. It's anybody, everybody who's going to do such a thing. But my question is, is to who is he saying? Who is he who, who, calling? Who, who heard this? Who heard these words? Who is he addressing to? Talking, is, talking it, to is he talking to the wall? Yeah, but what I'm no, is he talking to the wall? No, he's talking to the people that asked him the right. question. So now he's addressing them. You are an evil and adulterous. Look at the way he look at the way he says what he says. He answered, "A wicked and adulterous generation asks for a miracle sign, but none will be given." He is not saying you who are a wicked and adulterous generation. He is saying those who are wicked. He is just saying a. He is not to, talking to anyone specific. He is making look, a statement. Look, look, you are a Welsh. I don't know. You see, you are not an Englishman. No, I'm not English. You are not English. Well, you are Welsh. Welsh. No, no, maybe, no, no. There's a big difference. The Englishman, he knows his language. You see, A is an indefinite article. Okay, no, I agreed. I don't know in Welsh is that. No, it's the same. English is English. Mm -hmm. No, no, your Welsh English might be different. No, I don't you think see, so. You <laughs> see, A is an indefinite article. Yes. It means anybody, everybody. No, it doesn't mean everybody. It means any anybody. It means doesn't mean everybody. anybody who makes such a request. Yeah. Not necessarily you, but you are included. Anybody who makes a request asking me to perform something. No, then you would have had to use the word the wicked generation and not a. No, 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 no. No, no. It, I'm you being serious now. If you want to get grammar, grammatical, fuck. You mean, you mean this man's English? Right. They're just kind of, kind of, you see, <laughs> the, the Englishman has made it easy right. for people who are not born of English tongue. Right. Who have not got English. They've come out with it. Today's English version. Uh, come, come, come here. See, come come here. Come on to today's English version. Right. So today's English version. That's right. So this is to. But this guy doesn't accept that. Well, hang on. Huh? I'm seeing from a layman's point of view. Right. This is to help come, people. Come, come a little closer. This is to help people. Right. To understand simple things uh, that are, are said in certain way in the Bible because people didn't speak English that way. Right. So you say to somebody, 
so and so laid with so and so. Right. So now you say, now what does he mean laid? Right. So when you open this one, is that it has sex? This one says it had intercourse. Right. So if you take that particular verse, right. And now this is got today's English version, uh -huh. the Good News Bible. Good News Bible. Yeah. You, right. you know, you know he the Good News Bible. Um, you have it. Yeah. Then some of the teachers of the law and some Farsi spoke up. Teacher, they said, we want to see you perform a miracle. Right. 39, that's the verse you're looking at. Right. How evil and godless are the people of this day. Right. That's right. what he's talking, not a different gen of this day. Right. Jesus exclaimed, right. you ask me for a miracle? You no. ask me for a miracle? No, the only miracle you will be given is the miracle of the prophet Jonah. Right. Verse 40. In the same way that Jonah spent three days and nights in the big fish, so will the Son of Man spend three days and nights in the depths of the earth. So coming back to your question, which generation he was referring to? Okay, he's talking that about makes that it fantastic if you will agree that he was talking to the people of this day. This day? Yeah. Uh -huh. How evil and godless are people today? See, when people are talking to right, you, right, right, right. you say, 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 say this young man is complaining to you about how today youngsters are smoking about drugs right, and, right, 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 right. and you say, well, how evil are our children today? Right, right. Our children today right, right, right. means you're talking to that generation. Right, 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 right. So that's what it is here. Yeah, okay. So he's referring to that generation. Right. But now, you know, this little thing gets stuck in his throat, Gowan's throat. You know, I don't know whether we can proceed at all. You know, look, simple, basic language yeah. is telling you the man is addressing you, addressing me, then I start addressing you. Yeah. Says, you know, nation, actually, I'm implying you. You know, by you yeah. making such a silly request, I said, people, you know, they make such a, I'm actually swearing you, but you know, in a, uh, You're now, talking in a context, uh, right, 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 but it implies you, because you are the <coughs> because one, I'm a part you, you, you are the guy who's asking yes. for a sign. Okay. Right. So, he is abusive to the elders of his people, because we are told they are scribes and Pharisees, right? Okay. And they came with a simple elementary request, your identity, your proof. Yeah. Right. Then he does give a proof. He just gives a proof. And that is, he says, the sign, the miracle. Sign means a miracle. Yes. Not road well, sign. Well, not necessarily a miracle, but a sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you're reading there, that sign means a miracle. Miracle, yeah. Yeah, okay. Then this particular yeah. context. No, no, no. Some of the then then, then what, what are you... What are you want to see you perform a miracle. Yeah, okay. Now, is that a mistranslation? No, I'm saying in this context, yes. But now, what, what, then why the hell, you know, you're just trying to be difficult. What? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm, I'm telling you, difficult. sign means a miracle. Yeah. What, what, what I would suggest, uh, yes. what I would suggest, you yes. see, yes. You, you, you don't uh, blame him. He's, he's a young man now. He's, right. he, he's defensive. Right, right, right. Which is the right. nature of, of, yes. of people. Right. Right. There's nothing wrong. <laughs> he's defensive. So what happens is, he's sitting on guard and when you say, Sign. Did Jesus uh, say that? Uh, he says, uh, 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 maybe my Lord didn't say that. Right, right, right. Let me just check where it is. Right, 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 right. So what I would suggest, let me give you a piece of paper. Just make okay. notes of your questions. Uh -huh. Here, here uh, Mr. D that talk. Well, I've got questions. Yeah. Here, Mr. D that talk. Uh, and then you can come back and say, you know, when you said that with signs, were you referring yeah. to miracle or signs? So at least the discussion will get going. Yeah. Otherwise, you won't get further than no, one, no, no, one, no, no. one verse. Very good. You won't get further than Very one good. verse. Very good. Now, I agree with you on this point. The, the fact that they were asking for a miracle and then later on he says, except the sign of the prophet Jonah, agreed that this is a miracle is required to prove his identity. Right. Can right. you, you just make okay. notes for yourself? Yes. Okay, give yourself thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'll give you a pencil. No, I, I, okay. I, I'll give you a pencil. Thanks. And then even if you feel... That is wrong, just, okay. that's right. No, well, that's not my, that's, you know, okay, well, like I said, that's not my intention is to try and prove anybody wrong. I've got, you know, what I believe, yeah. I base my life no, I, I, I on the Bible. I, I, I take it. So now Jesus says, the only sign I'm going to give you, mm -hmm. miracle, yeah. is the sign of the prophet Jonah. Okay. Meaning, what happened to Jonah is going to happen to me. What happened to Jonah, the miracle of Jonah is my miracle. The sign of Jonah is my sign. The sign that they want, the, the miracle that you'll use. The miracle that you want to see. Yeah. Whatever Jonah did, you will see that in me. No, I think you're taking a bit out of context there. Now, what is the context? You tell me now. I'm not disagreeing with you. No, that, that mean, the very yeah. fact that you're saying, uh, what is the... That okay. You're disagreeing with me. You're not disagreeing with me. The generation asked for a miraculous sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and nights, 
three, three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three, three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Right. The only comparison, the only way the two miracles are alike is the fact that Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a whale, and so Jesus Christ was three days and three nights in the earth. There is nothing, in no way does Jesus Christ intend to imply that he would be in three days and three nights in the belly of a whale, or that he would be like Jonah, apart from the fact that he would be three days and three nights be somewhere out of vision of people, you know, no one would see him there. Do you understand what I'm saying? They are looking for a miracle. Yeah, and that is it's the miracle he's going to give them. Keep that with you. This will also help you. Okay, thanks. You see, this one says, it's the same thing that you are saying, but it's so simple. Jesus, you ask me for a miracle, no, the only miracle you will be given is the miracle of the prophet. In the same way that Jonah spent yeah, three days and nights. In the same way. Yeah, I say for as Jonah was. For as means, easier for in your language, for as Jonah was. In the same me, way. Same way. Yeah. So now, now, you see, uh, go on. Uh, you, you stay in a room for three days and three yes. nights. Is that a miracle? No, of course not. Because anyone can come into the room and see. No, 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 no. no. You get out of sight of people for three days and three nights. Is yeah. that a miracle? No, of course not. No. Miracle is an impossibility. You see, a miracle is an impossibility. Yeah. How do you, how do you, how do you, do, how do you qualify Jonah's, what happened to Jonah as a miracle? Right. How do you, no, I want to, oh, this is my question, how do you qualify that as a miracle? Right. I'll show you. I'll show okay, you. Well, I'm going to write that down. Please. Right. Sorry, carry on, right. I'm listening. Right. You see, miracle is an impossibility. Like a man collapsing, and we shout for a doctor, the doctor comes and certifies the man dead. Yeah. Another man comes along, a godly person, a saint, Jesus comes along, and he says, Salisa kumi, damsel arise. Yeah. And the person wakes up. Yeah. Or certified dead, mm -hmm. the person wakes up. Uh -huh. From the dead, we say it's a miracle. Okay. Mm, impossible. Because the person is something that seemed couldn't happen did happen. Right. right. Impossibility. Yes. That's a miracle. But after three days, Lazarus was dead for three days. Uh huh. And Jesus brings them back to life. Uh huh. That's a greater miracle. Yes. Well, we consider greater because he was dead a long, a long time. Three days. You see. Yeah. That's a greater miracle. So the greater the impossibility, the greater the miracle. Okay. Right. But if the man was dead and buried for centuries, the bones have rotted in the grave, yeah. and that guy is resurrected, that's still a greater miracle. By our standards. By any standards. I know, by human standards. I don't think but God would see it the same way. No, the fact, is, the fact no is, when you get down to the basics, is the man died and he was... He was re-laughed. Life was put into right. him again. So, the, you just died now, and if I wake you up now, it's a miracle. Okay. Right. But after three days, it's a greater miracle. Yeah, okay, we'll call it that. But a hundred years, it's even a greater miracle. Right. Okay. So the greater the impossibility, the greater the miracle. Okay, if we want to put a degree of right. a level, level right. of miracle. No, it's a natural thing, you know, The miracles of Jesus Christ, you would say, are superior to those of Moses. You know, Jesus gave life back to the dead. Moses did only certain, certain things. Right? Was this prophet and that prophet did it certain certain thing, but Jesus he gave life back to the dead, and okay. this is the prerogative of God. Hmm. And he did it. After three days, Lazarus came back to life. Okay. So he said, No, <clears throat> if Muhammad gave life back to the dead girl, she was, had just died. Maybe she was in a coma, and Muhammad revived her. Yes. Uh, we would claim that it was the miracle of Muhammad. Yeah. But you said, No, my Jesus, he gave life back to Lazarus after three days. Okay. So that is a greater miracle. So, according to human logic, reasoning, yeah. I will have to agree with you that that is greater. Yeah. Somebody else comes along and said, look, my prophet, he brought back the people from the dead after centuries. Okay. So, so he's agreed. We, no, we, we have to greater. concede that that is a greater so miracle. we are taking a degree and increasing saying right. the fact is right. that he was a hundred years later that he was resurrected. That's a greater miracle. So okay. the, they want a miracle from Jesus and Jesus is the only sign, only miracle. Mm. I'm going to show you yes. is the miracle of Jonah. That for as Jonah was, yeah. three days and three, three, nights, days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be. Just like that. 
three days and three nights in the belly of the earth. So I'm asking a simple question, what was that sign? What was that miracle of Jonah? What was impossible? Things that he well, did. Yeah, that's the question I'm gonna, that I wanted to ask was, okay, I'll answer your question because you asked me now. In my mind, like the question I wrote down was, how do you qualify Jonah's being in three days and three nights in the belly of the whale as a miracle? Does it seem human, log logically human, that a man could survive for three days and three nights in the belly of a whale? No. So that, therefore, by that, that would qualify it as a miracle, right? Beautiful. Beautiful. Fantastic. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. Now, no, look, we have to be reasonable, Governor. Yeah. Jesus said, seek ye the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yeah. Right. It's not you trying to catch me out, I'm trying to catch you out. There's nothing. We yeah. are, must cooperate with one another. Look, fantastic. What you yeah. said just now, beautiful. Now, I will show you okay. that the miracle of Jonah is three times over. Three times over. What do you mean? I'll explain to you. You see, Jonah was sent to the Ninevites. God Almighty tells him, go to Nineveh okay. and warn the people. Because they're a wicked city. That they must repent in sackcloth and in ashes. Humble themselves before the Lord. Yes. Jonah is despondent. You know, he feels that those materialistic people of his time, like the materialistic people of Jesus' time, they are asking for a sign. Those people, they will make a mockery of him. They laugh him out. So instead of going to Nineveh, he goes to Joppa, modern Jaffa. Mm, Jaffa, yes. Okay. And he takes a boat and is running away to Tarshish. He's running away. Right. At sea there is a storm. And according to the superstitions of these people, anybody who runs away from his duty, from his master's command, to die. creates such a turmoil at sea. Oh, okay. Sorry, I understand what you're saying. Yes. Out of superstition, they believe the storm would come. Right, right. And the storm is not ab uh, ab abating. Mm -hmm. So they began to question, who can be responsible, you know, for this storm? This is the miracle you're talking about, what happens to Jonah. So when Jonah rem remembers that he is <laughs> derelicting his duty. Mm. God he's told him to go to Nineveh and is running away. So God is after his blood. Well, so God <laughs> wants to speaking. <laughs> yes. So God wants to kill him. Yes. So in the process, he's going to sing the boat. Uh huh. And these innocent people will die. As well, because of the consequence of what he did. Correct. So Jonah volunteers that look, I'm the guilty man. <laughs> Throw me overboard, and it'll be all right for you. Yeah. That's the book of Jonah. Yes. Right. So they say, no man, you are such a good man, you know, such a holy man. Since you got into the boat, we have seen you prayerful. You know, always mm -hmm. praying, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We see you are a good man. Maybe you want to commit suicide. You know, you want us to help you to commit suicide. So no, we have our own system of finding out right from wrong, which is called casting of lots, which is like head or tail. Yes. Right. Tossing of the coin. Tossing the coin. Right. So according to the system, they started their way of tossing the coin, and it came to the turn of Jonah that Jonah was a guilty man. So they took him and they threw him overboard. Okay. Right. Now the question arises that when they threw him overboard, was he dead or was he alive? Well, I'm really Look, to, 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 help you, to help you. You see, to help you, the man had volunteered. When a man volunteers, like you now, he says, Uncle, look, if you are very busy, I'll come some other time. Right? Yes. I said, no, no, my son, sit down, sit down, man. Sit down. You know, shall I get you some tea, some coffee? And then while we are chatting, an urgent call comes along. Okay. And I wanted immediately. So I said, go on, please forgive me. My son, you know, I have an urgent call. Come some other time. Okay, great. Okay. You say, all right, Uncle, you know, because you had already volunteered. Yes, right. to come up by now. Now, because you had volunteered, I don't have to catch you by the scruff of your neck. And throw me out. I said, you bastards, you know, you people are not considering other people's time, and this is not, you just come on barging any time of, you know, no prior appointment. I don't have to do that, because you had already offered There's your... an agreement. You had, you had all, all, all the offer, he said, Uncle, if you are busy, I'll come some other time. Yeah. And it was my insistence. Sit down, my son, and you know, I've got endless time. But okay. something happened, and now I have, you to, have, to, leave. I have to ask you. Okay. I don't have to strangle you. <laughs> I don't have to, <laughs> to, you know, twist your arm. You know, it's a comfortable bastard. You know, 
get out of freely, so I'll leave freely. Beautiful. So, when they threw him overboard, they didn't have to strangle him. They didn't have to, they didn't have to spear him. Because they, they didn't have to force any force because the man volunteered. Mm. So, they threw him overboard. Okay. The man was alive. Okay. They didn't kill him before throwing him. They didn't need to. They didn't need to. And the storm subsides. Perhaps it was a coincidence. A fish comes and gobbles a man. Okay. A fish is not a respecter of person. No, to no. say, you know, you Jonah, you are a prophet of God. Mm, come, come, my child. <laughs> gently, gently. Yeah. No, no, no. It's a fish is a fish. You find some, you know, how, how the shark. How the shark eh? Yeah. You'll kill the man. Okay. You'll kill the man. So, when the fish swallowed him, was he dead or was he alive? He was still alive. Okay. Right. From the fish's belly, he prays to God for help. Mm -hmm. Do dead people pray? No, of course no. not. So he was still alive. alive. Right. Okay. Three days and three nights, the fish takes him around the ocean, alive. Yeah. On the third day, vomits on the seashore, still alive. Uh -huh. It's a miracle three times over. See, reason it. Throwing him into a raging sea, he ought to die. Mm. If he died, it's not a miracle. We expect the man to die. He was alive, so it's a, it's a miracle. miracle right. it's a miracle. If he died, it's not a miracle. Like me taking a gun. You know, pulling the trigger, and putting six shot. shots through your heart. <laughs> you know? And if you died, there's nothing miraculous about that. I'm dead, I'm dead. That's right. But if I survive, but, but not only survive, you know, you laugh at us. <laughs> your, your heart is torn to pieces. Yeah. And you're, you know, you're still laughing and joking. The uncle hurt you, man, you're tickling me. It's a miracle. Mm -hmm. It's a miracle. Yeah. Because we expect you to die. If you died, it's not a miracle. We expect the man to die. Jonah, yeah. and if he died, it's not a miracle. Right. Because he didn't die, it's a miracle. Right. Right. A fish comes and gobbles the man, he ought to die. If he died, it's not a miracle. He didn't die, it's a miracle. Okay. Three days and three nights, suffocation and heat in the whale's belly. Yeah. The man ought to die. He ought to die. If he died, it's not a miracle. He didn't die, it's a miracle. Yeah. It's a miracle three times over. In fact, it's a miracle that I think four, four times over because the whale spat him out on, on the shore. He could have... No, 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 the thing is alive. The thing oh, is okay. the most three, important. Three, three, four, and three. Jesus said, for as Jonah was, for as Jonah was, just like Jonah, what happened to Jonah is going to happen to me. Uh -huh. The miracle of Jonah is my miracle. Okay. His miracle is three times over. Yeah. Now, Jonah is alive for three days and three nights. Okay. According to your church, Jesus in the tomb for three days and three nights. Was he dead or was he alive? He was dead. In body. No, no. Man, when we talk about death, and he gave up the ghost. You remember on the cross? John the Bible 15. says, and he gave up the ghost. In other words, he died. He died. So now when you say he died, he died. You always say, no, it's only the separation of the soul. That is, damn it all, when your grandfather died, that is what you call your grandfather is dead, I take it, go on. Yeah. Right. He said, he said, he's not dead. You know, it's only his soul was separated from... I said, look, please, man, don't try to be, be you know, funny. I see what you're saying. You see, the man is dead, is dead. Being the body and the soul separated, separated. is dead. Uh-huh. That woman, Salisa Kuni, damsel arise, you know, Jesus rose. Uh-huh. He said, look, she was dead. The soul had come out. Uh-huh. That was dead. So that was a miracle. Lazarus, three days and three nights, the soul was separated. Yes. The soul doesn't die. We believe the soul is there, you see. Yeah. But it's the body, separated from the body, we call it death. So three days and three nights, Jonah was alive. Right. Then we expect him to be dead. Jesus for three days and three nights, he was dead. Mm. Now, in your language, your English, okay. go on. Is that like Jonah or unlike Jonah? For he says, for as Jonah was, Wagubak Chengo Jonah, want Suas Yona. Suas Yona in Afrikaans, just like Jonah. Yes. Wagubak Chengo Chona in Zulu. In every language of the world, it is so clear. For as Jonah was, like Jonah, and that Bible, new Bible, you know, new English Bible, yeah. it tells you more clearly that it will be just like Jonah. So, you are telling me that according to your belief, Jesus was dead. And according to your belief, Jonah was alive. 
But Jesus said he'll be like Jonah. So you're telling me now Jesus is a liar for no, what no, I'm, not, I'm not telling you. I no, want, you are. No, I, and you're English. You see, this is your language. Yeah. This is not Greek. <laughs> yeah, Greek. Or Arabic. Right. The man said, I will be like Jonah. And it's a miracle, the miracle of Jonah. The only miracle he performed in that whole book of Jonah was this. There's no other miracle he performed, do you know that? The only miraculous thing about Jonah is that when the three hundred raging sea is alive, fish go gobbles him alive, three days and three nights he's alive. That's a miracle of a miracle of a miracle, three times over. And Jesus said, my miracle that you want to see is that of Jonah. What happened to Jonah is going to happen to me. For as Jonah was, as Jonah was three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be. Three days and three nights in the belly of the earth, just like Jonah. You are telling me now that Jonah was alive and Jesus is dead. He was dead. So, it's not like so, so I want to know in your language, in your language, your English, your Welsh, is that like Jonah or unlike Jonah? Well, I think you have taken what happens to Jonah, totally out of context and tried to twist the you whole know, you, you tell me what is the context. Come on, you okay, give me the listen, context. Listen, listen here. In the same way that Jonah spent three days in the, same way. In, the is that in the same way. In the no, same way. Did I finish what I was saying, please? Uh -huh. In the same way that Jonah spent three days and nights in the big fish, so will the Son of Man spend three days and three nights in the depths of the earth. Now, it doesn't matter whether Jonah was alive or dead or Jesus Christ was alive or dead. The fact is that both of them spent three days and three nights somewhere in a miraculous state. You'll agree. No, no, the miraculous no, state. You'll agree with me? No, 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 no. finish what I was the saying. The miraculous state. That is the heart of the matter. You see, the, 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 the stress is on miraculous. I hear state. what you're saying, but you've taken it right out of context. No, no. You tell me, man. You are an English-speaking person. No, if I call a native, is. if I call a native English-speaking native from the street, he will be able to see, man, that you're talking like a loony. By God. No, what you no, no. you going to great depths over something that is totally irrelevant and arbitrary. No, Jesus Christ is is emphasizing. He's going out of his way to give them a sign. And look, 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 look at me. He's emphasizing for as Jonah was, mm -hmm. look, 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 three days and three nights yes. in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the belly of the earth. He's going out of his way. He uses the word three, four times. You notice that? That in the, just like that, just like that. And you said just now, the miraculous nature. Okay. The miraculous nature is Jonah being there, being alive, that's miraculous. Uh -huh. Just being three days and three nights, I locked you in a, in a cell. Mm -hmm. There's no miracle about that. Of course. Right? Or in a chest for three days, and if you survive, you know, there's no miracle about that. Mm -hmm. The only miracle is that when you expect a man to die, and he doesn't die. Okay. Same thing should happen to Jesus. We expect him to die. See, if he died, no miracle. For example, you know, a guy punched him in the stomach at the trial. Mm -hmm. Nothing miraculous about that. No. Somebody lands him on the side with a spear. Mm -hmm. Nothing miraculous about he that. He did that some anyway. See, so he had beating and all that, what and what not, you know. So I said, look, there's nothing miraculous about that. You know, the guy beating him, telling him, come on, prophesy who hit you. Mm -hmm. The miracle is that we expect Jesus to die. If he died, it's not a miracle. If he didn't die, it's a miracle. No, that's, that's absolute trap. That's rubbish. That's junk. We expect Jonah to die. No, so you, you no, no. have taken the whole scripture out of context and twisted it for your own means. No, no, you no, have no, done. No, 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 because no. the whole fact is, the, everything that Jesus Christ is trying to say here is not the fact that... No, what he's trying to say? You tell me. What he's trying to say? Look at it, the context the, of what he's go trying ahead, to say. Go ahead. Give me the context. What he is saying is here, is they asked for a miracle. I should agree with me. They asked for a sign. Right. Miracle. Okay. Miracle. Uh, okay, we'll say a miracle, sign, witness. It's the same thing. Right. They asked for a miracle. Uh -huh. To, to prove that who he was. He said, the only son you shall receive is that I, he's saying, okay, I will die for three years and three nights. He didn't say, he didn't say I will die. Don't put words there, damn it all, man. Where are you got the word die there? Well, no, no, what, what right here? Okay. He, where, where did he say I will die? So will the son of man spend three nights, three days and nights in the depths of the earth. Okay, why would he go into the earth for three days and three nights other than if he was dead? Why? You why, agree why, with me? Why would you agree? No, no. What kind of miracle if he went now, uh, disappeared underground for three days and three nights, right. and came up and said, "Here I am again"? What kind of miracle would that be? If he, if he remained, that is no miracle. You no, agree no, with no, me? No, no, no you no, agree no, with no, me? No, that no, is no, no miracle. 
the miracle of Jonah is that he went no, into forget the about Jonah now. I'm talking about How Jesus. can you forget about Jonah? When you're Jesus Christ, your God, damn it all, he's emphasizing the thing and the only sign, the only sign he said I'm going to give you. Three you. days and three nights. Right. So now you agreed with me that the three days and three nights keeping you in a cell. That's not it's a miracle. miracle, right? Right. But if I put you to some kind of sausage machine, yeah. and you come out on the other side, you were supposed to come out as a sausage. But instead of that machine, which turns everything into sausage, pigs and dogs and donkeys, anything, Whatever. and now you put in and you come out as you went in. So we say it's a miracle. Okay. Because we, we expect you to become a sausage and you didn't become a sausage. Okay. We expect Jonah to be dead and he didn't die, it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. right. We expect Jesus also to die from the treatment that he had received. Which he did. So if he died, it's not a miracle. That is, that is the, the most nonsensical lot of junk I've ever... What happened, what happened three days after, after he was there? What happened? What was the whole crux? No, no, for three days and three nights. He, he didn't say what happens afterwards. You know, look, afterwards Jonah may have got married. That, that, is, that is where I'm coming. That is the point I'm heading at. But you're not actually giving me the chance no, to... Go ahead, my son. Go ahead. Yeah, well, you keep saying that, that's no, no miracle. What? No, no, I want you to be reasonable, consistent. You see? Yeah. Don't get flabbergasted. Yeah. Right. You know, be, be calm. I'm calm. Right. So we say now that the miracle of Jonah was that he's alive for three days and three nights. Okay. Jesus is dead for three days and three nights. We expect him to die. Okay. And he died. Yeah. So it's not a miracle. You, but you, you haven't, you've taken like half the story. The, the half, okay. Three I, days I, and I three agree, nights. I agree with you. What he says here, the only way, that's why I said the only way that his miracle and the miracle that happened to Jonah compare is the fact that for three days and three nights they were out of the sight of human beings. There was no. Is one, that a miracle? There's no one. Look, in the, no, no, go out there. of people's sight. There. I'm getting there. I'm getting to what I'm going to say. Right. The, you'll agree with me that is the only way the two miracles compare is that Jesus Christ was dead for three days and three nights. The fact is, three days and three nights, Jesus was dead, and three days and three nights, Jonah was in the belly of a whale. Alive. Alive. The fact whether he was alive or dead is irrelevant in this case. Damn it all, you agreed with me that it's a miracle that Jonah is alive. Yeah, but... Uh, do, 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 you, do you agree with me? Yes. Okay. That, look, I said it's a miracle three times over. Go yeah, on. whatever. Right. That's, that's, not, look, that's not the point. When you throw a man into a raging sea, the man ought to whatever. die. Whatever. Okay, we've discussed this. He didn't die. Well, I've agreed with you, we've discussed this. So now, once you've agreed with that, okay. it's a miracle of a miracle of a miracle. Etc. Right. And Jesus wants to emphasize that very fact. Okay. No, I what? don't believe that. Are you wrong? No, no, you're wrong. No, no, you really just no, for, as jo for as Jonah was, mm -hmm. for as Jonah was, three days and three nights. Three days and three nights. Operated, Wait, does operated, he say? Was it? Does does he say? That, listen to me. He says in the same way that Jonah was no, 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 no. alive in the big fish, or does he say in the same way? In the same way. Look, do you understand English? Yes. No, but you is that Welsh? Is that, that Welsh? Words, you reading? It's perfect English. Right. Me. So he said in the same way. In the same way that Jonah was alive. Okay. So no, he doesn't say alive. Right. Or right in the same way. The miracle. In the big fish. Right, right, right. Alive, so, dead, no, 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 rotting. Right, 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 right. But the miracle. Suppose the man went into the wish fish's belly. Okay. Right. And he died. Is that a miracle? Obviously not. Because no, no one would ever see no, him again. No, no, no. Right. Finish. So, in other words, the miracle is the impossibility. You agreed with me, Gowen, that the impossibility... Yeah, in that context, but then you've taken no, no, this in, verse in, out of... In, 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 in making all that point, you have taken this out of context, because that is not the point that Jesus is making here. What, what point is he making? The point that the entire fact, everything that Jesus is saying here, is the fact that three days and three nights, that is the only way, Jonah's miracle, and this let, is what let, happened let, to let, Jesus. Let, let, let. Read there. Which one? Three Which days and three one? nights. 38. On the other side of the page, on this side of the page, you see at the bottom there on the left hand, on the right hand side. Three days and three then nights. Then some teachers of the Lord, right, teachers, they said, how evil and godless. Like okay, I forget about that. Let's go straight to the Jesus flesh. exclaimed, you asked me for a miracle? No. For as Jonah the was only, three days no, no, and listen, three nights listen, in the belly, no, I'm not no, interested no, no, in no, this Bible. The only miracle you will be given is the miracle of the prophet Jonah. In the same way, in the same way, that Jonah spent three days and three nights in the same way 
How did you spend three years in Zaire? That, that is irrelevant. Then, that is irrelevant. That, then why you are you taking why, oh. English grammar out of context? Look, look, I don't know whether you know English, my son. Uh, but I've got A, I'm an A student no, for English. No, no, no. But you see, your English is perverted. I'm sorry, this is very stupid. Now you're calling me mm. stupid. No, no, no. Look, you are stupid because it says here, in the same way. What is in the same way? What does it mean? You're a language man. You, your language, your you language. are telling me that I am wrong and telling me that, that you... In the same you way means in the same way that Jonah was. In what way was the same right. that... What is, what is the way? It's not three that days and three nights is the only way that what Jesus did. Right, right, right. Okay, and now, what happened oh, to Jonah right, is the right, same right, right. way. So you say it is the three days and three nights. Okay. Okay, right. Now I am asking you, go on. When was he crucified? What when, day? Uh, I think it was, it was a Thursday night or a Friday night. You will celebrate Good Friday. You, you see, the thing is, I'm not, I'm not Jewish, so I know that f Sunday is the first day of the week, the Sabbath Good day. Friday, Good Friday is celebrated throughout the Christian world. Okay. I'm asking the Christian, what makes Good Friday good? The night that so he tells me, because Christ died for our sins on that day. Okay. That makes it good. You know, the murder of the only begotten son, it makes it good because he died for your sins. Yeah. So... He was crucified in the afternoon yeah. of Good Friday, Friday, and towards evening they got the permission to bring the body down. Nicodemus, he had gone to uh, Pontius Pilate to seek for the body, and he wondered if he were any while dead. He says, no man, no man can die within three hours, because this crucifixion was to be a slow lingering death. That's what crucifixion was all about. Yes. It was not a merciful way out, like shooting a guy, drowning a man, you know, boiling what hot oil. That was, the man died too soon. Yeah. You see? Wonder, they so wanted a slow for... lingering death, okay. that he becomes an object lesson for others. Yeah. So look, well, if, what's you, your point? if you commit the same crime, you'll have to, you'll go that way. So it was supposed to be a slow lingering death. Okay. So Pontius Pilate marvels he marvels if he were any while dead. And the centurion who was standing by, he verified that he is dead. Mm -hmm. right. Right. We see that in John chapter 20. <coughs> see, you know the Bible so well. No, I'm not fantastic, it. I'm not that learned, right. believe me. So, they get the permission to bring the body down. They brought the body down. Yeah. They gave him a burial bath, which Jews do, burial wash. Yeah. wash. And they put 100 pound weight of medicants around him. And they put a shroud around him. Uh -huh. By that time, it's already evening. By that time, it's already evening. You know, you just don't give a bath, putting a bucket of water over the guy. You know, the Jews and the Muslims, oh, with, with, they, you know, with respect, they so must have done everything. And 100 pound weight of medicants. You put oh, around sorry, what? 100 pounds weight. Of what? Medicants. What's there? Ointments. Oh, or it's... Uh, Perfumes, etc. Whatever. Right. To put 100 pounds weight. Yeah. 50 kilograms is a lot. It's a lot of thing to put around the man. It just kind of... You know, like what you see... Yeah, it's with a your time, obviously. But what's your point? My point is that by the time they finished the job, they put him into the set of the, It was already evening. Okay. Right. So, Friday night... Watch my finger. Yeah. He's supposed to be in the grave. Yeah. Saturday daytime, he's still supposed to be in the grave. Okay. Saturday night, he's still supposed to be in the grave. Yeah. Sunday morning, the first day of the week, uh -huh. Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb. Uh -huh. And the tomb is empty. Yeah. So how many days and how many nights? Oh man, this is irrelevant. You've jumped, you jumped from one... What were we talking about? What was our you first said, point of discussion? You said three days and three nights. You said it's not whether alive or dead. I'm going to talk to brick walls and get more sense out of them. I really I, I'm am. sure. Look, same thing to me. I'm a 75 year old machine. I respect your age. I respect you. No, no, you're not. You're not. But you see, no, you're, trying, you're trying to be funny. No, I'm not. Look, I, look I, I, I read it as, 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 read it as no, no, I see it. You said, according to your words, you said it is not three, it is three days and three nights. It is not whether dead or alive. Yeah. Right. So I agreed with you for a moment. I said, okay. So let us see now whether he fulfilled that. I said, Friday night, he's supposed to be in the grave. He could have come out, but because we have no knowledge, the Bible doesn't say. I won't say. 
yeah. that they, they just put him there to for sure and immediately when the people moved away they took him and him put him into it. I won't say that because it's not written there. Yeah. So Friday night he's supposed to be in the grave. Saturday day, you see the day is divided into day parts and night parts. Jesus did that. Obviously. For us, Jonah so was three so days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights. So he divided the day into day part and night part. So I'm doing the same. Friday night, he's supposed to be in the grave. Yeah. Fri Saturday day, he's supposed to be in the grave. Saturday night, he's still supposed to be in the grave. Sunday morning, the first day of the week, when Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb, the tomb is empty. Yeah. Now, is that three days and three nights? Look, he said, for as Jonah was three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be. Look, 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 look. So I'm just going to work out what day it was, because I'm, I'm pretty no, sure. No, I, I, are you understanding English? Simple, basic, three days and three nights, man. Damn it all, you want to look at the dictionary? You want to look at the concordance please, for that? Please don't shout at me. No, no, this is my, yo, this old machine talks like that. Whether anybody comes along, no, this is how I talk. you talking to me, look. Then, you better. Because you've you, you, you you taken... Look, look, you you argue I'm, I'm, that's not the point I was trying to bring across. What point you wanted to come up? What point? You tell me that. No, because what I was trying to say is in the three days and three nights was, <coughs> excuse me, that miracle they were asking for, the miracle he was going to show them was the fact that he would be crucified for having claimed to be king of the Jews. He was crucified, buried. The miracle was on the third day he rose. When, he, when she went to the tomb, the tomb was empty, the stone was, had been rolled past and the tomb was empty and she was distressed because the body had been removed and he went behind her, well he came in and he says, woman what are you crying about? and, and, and she doesn't realize who he is that is the miracle where's the miracle? that he was, that he was killed, he was, they had killed him, you see that I'll read it no, no, that's, that's what I'm telling you, look, look that's unlike Jonah go on that is yeah, but that's, that's where that's why I'm saying I think you you're taking that whole thing out of context. What? Now no, don't accuse me for that. You tell me that no, look, I'm not, okay, you are I'm accusing not, me saying, I'm not saying of you taking are. it out of context. No, I think you I, are. It is I am giving you the context as I see it, as I read there. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall he says in the same way. Yeah. In your Bible says in the same way, yeah. ah, this one here, this, yeah. Yeah. in the same way, good news Bible, so in the same way, same way that Jonah was, same way will be with me, yeah. right? So I'm asking you, Jonah is alive and Jesus is dead. Okay. You agreed. Yeah. So I said, is this in the same way? It's not in the same way. That's not what he was trying to right. say. So now you said it was the three days and three nights. So I said, okay, in that case, let's see whether he fulfilled that. He was supposed to fulfill the miracle of Jonah. You said, no, no, it is the time factor. I said, okay, let's look at the time factor. I don't, I don't know the Jewish calendar, please. I can't argue Let me tell you, look, man, you don't want to know the Jewish calendar or the Gregorian no, or the Arab. I don't know that yeah. Friday was the night he was crucified. They do not say Friday here. I don't know these things. I can't say for, you're wrong with you. For 2,000 right. years, the Christian world is commemorating Good Friday. Am I right? Yeah. Are they all led by the devil for 2,000 years? That means Demigod, you didn't know when he was crucified. For 2,000 years, yes. you are commemorating Good Friday. I'm asking, I asked you, what makes Good Friday good? You said Christ died for your sins. We've called it Good Why have we called it Good Friday? Good. What makes it good? No, why have we called it Good Friday, is what I'm saying, Friday, out of tradition. Tradition yeah. that has been introduced, that is my no, point. No, no, who introduced the tradition, the devil or Jesus Christ? Who introduced that tradition? The devil introduced that tradition into you for 2,000 years and still you well, don't, I don't know. Think it was 2,000 years, it was probably less than 1,000 th years. Okay, 1,000 years. Yeah. You are still in the 20th century, my son. Yeah. Mighty America is commemorating Good Friday. And South Africa, the whites and the blacks, they're all commemorating Good Friday. So and every Christian nation on earth, including France, Germany, whatever, and Good in Friday. Russia, and in Greece, and every damn country in the world, they all commemorate Good Friday. Yes. And I'm asking what makes Good Friday good? And they all tell me, unanimous, that because Christ died for our sins on that day. Yeah. Right. So I said, it was a Good Friday. He said, yes, that it was in the afternoon. It was not nine o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. This is no, no, it was in the afternoon. Yeah. So I said, now all this 
bury your wash and the ointments and the shroud and putting the man into the sepulchre, you know, it takes time. So it's already evening. You agreed with me. Mm. So I said, so in that case, Friday evening, Friday night, he's supposed to be in the grave. I just interject here. This is where um, I have um, contention is that I agree with you. We call it Good Friday. You have counted Friday, Saturday, Saturday night being only one and a half days. Agree two nights and a day. One and a half days. Two, two nights and a day. Night being only one and a half days. Agree two nights and a day. One and a half days. Two nights and a day. Which is 12 hours, 12 hours, 12 no. hours. Call it one and a half days. Night time. I'm just compounding. No, 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 you no, see no, what I'm saying? Don't do that. Look. Okay, two nights and one day. Two nights and a day. Okay, great. But he said three nights and three days. No, I'm getting to that. Please, I'm, I hear what you're saying and I agree with you. But my point is tradition has now dictated that that Friday, whether it's a Thursday or a Wednesday, you, you'll agree now, w when is good, that time that Jesus Christ was crucified, in fact it's actually a, the celebration, the Jewish celebration is for when he was crucified to when he ascended, to Ascension Day is the Jewish celebration over that, uh, that period of time. But that time that he was crucified, we call it Good Friday, I don't know why, because a lot of times I've, in my life, Good Friday has probably more than not appeared on a, a Wednesday or a Thursday, in fact this year it was on a Thursday. No, no. Good Friday appears on Good Friday. It's Good exactly Friday is always is and Easter Friday. Monday is a Monday. Every year of the year is the dates are changing, but the day, the dates, dates, you know, dates, mm -hmm. you know, the so 16th or 17th or 18th, now the dates change, but the days remain. Friday is Friday. We have four days holiday in South Africa. Do you know that? Yeah. In America, four days holiday. In Britain, four days holiday during this. Easter season, yeah. right? So why Friday? Because Christ died on Good Friday. What, sorry, what four days are those? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So do you not think that maybe he ro we rose again on Monday and not on the Sunday, mm -hmm. making it three days and three nights? What Would you, what do you, do you think so? Maybe, what, just, what, you know, what, maybe. This is, how, this is how you celebrate Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Four okay, days. four days. Why is, public, why is Monday the public holiday yeah. as well? Because, 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 man, you know, Sunday is a ho holiday in any case. Sunday is a holiday so in for any case. So that is now not because of, of Jesus Christ being resurrected on that day. That's not the reason. You have the worship of the sun god, your pagan ancestors. They worship the sun god on a Sunday. Nonsense, man. Uh, 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 slow it down. S Sunday is the first day of the week. That is the seventh that is the day. Jewish the seventh day in actual no, fact no, no. is a Saturday, that, that not is, a Sunday. No, no, no. The Jewish, Jewish calculation, Saturday, Sunday is the first day of the week. Okay. Okay. Saturday means seventh. Which is the seventh, seventh day. Seventh day. Now, the Christian, not the Christian, well, the pagan world, Greece, Rome, they all had the worship of the sun god. They okay. were worshipping the sun god <coughs> on a Sunday. They were not worshipping the sun god because of Jesus Christ rose on that day. They were worshipping the sun god on a Sunday. That's why you call it Sunday. Okay. Sunday is the worship of the sun on that day. Oh, I don't know that, but yes, I'll take you at first. It seems yeah. pretty logical. Morn, morn day is the worship of morn, stars. Is, these are all the gods of your ancient pagan forefathers. You know, the Norwegians and the Danes. Whatever. They worshipped all these things and they commemorated <laughs> Sunday as the worship of the sun god. Yeah. Right. So now you are having a public holiday in any case. Yeah. Whenever in South Africa we have a holiday falling on Sunday, we have automatically a holiday on Monday. Yeah, I agree with you. I understand what you're saying there. Right. So, now, for that reason, not that because Christ could have been resurrected on Monday. Yeah. No, no. This is the logic for why Monday is always a holiday. Yeah. Because of Sunday. Because of Sunday. So they'd pass it through to Monday. Right. <coughs> so, so because Saturday is the Sabbath day, do you not think that Jesus Christ might not... If He was... We'll, we'll presume, because the Bible says... Just theoretically speaking, hypothetical, that because he was crucified and was dead for three days and three nights, ignoring whether Jonah was alive or dead in the well, the fact was the comparison in Jonah's miracle, which is what I was trying to say, in Jonah's miracle and the, Jesus, the miracle that Jesus, or the sign that Jesus was going to give, was the fact that he would be dead for, th or for three days and three nights, he would be in the earth. That's what he said, right? You'll agree. But there's nothing miraculous no, about that. No, just hold on, hold on, slow down. You'll agree with me that he said he would be in the earth for three days. And he three didn't nights. say that. He'll say like Jonah. Okay, forget about like How Jonah. you can't, man. Damn it all. This man is Sorry, emphasizing. Glasses. Yeah. 
Just hold your eyes. <laughs> yeah, I did. Really. So will the Son of Man spend three days and nights in the depths of the earth? Right. You'll agree with me. So, agree. so, so, so. so. What is that? So. So, so will that, the Son. That. No, no, you're taking out. You're not listening to my points. <laughs> Just let me, can I please finish what I'm saying? Yes, my you son. Keep, you keep no, jumping my son. down my no, throat and I don't get a chance my to son. repeat my myself. Son. My son, look. You see, you are terrified of truth. No. <laughs> what does it say here? The truth shall set you free. I've been set free by the word of God. No, no. Look. No, uh, is that the, no, let, let's, let's change the subject for a little while. No, look, I, don't, I want to finish the points I was... I was useless. Because you, not. you can't. You, you, are so, you, know, you are so worked up. You are so closed in. Just like the Jews. Well, I you think that's a very no, unfair thing to say. No, no, look. Jesus Christ showed many miracles. But the Jews couldn't see them. Jesus is seeing, they, they see not. That Jesus, Jesus said, Messiah, Jesus said seeing, they see not. Hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. Hmm. It can happen. It can happen to the most intellectual of people, the Jews. It can happen to them. It can happen to you and to me. Right? That you don't want to see the truth. Man, simple, basic things. I, I, I'm giving you a little child can follow this. I says Friday night, Saturday day, Saturday night, Sunday morning, first day of the week. Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb and the tomb is empty. You agree? So I said two nights and a day. Jesus said three days and three nights, Man, and he wow, repeats you're it. Just taking it right out of context, completely and utterly. What day is the Sabbath day in the Jewish calendar? Saturday. Okay, great. He arose on the Sabbath, did he not? I don't know. When he arose, you well, are telling me, you okay, telling me, I'm you, telling you, you in, telling in, me in Sunday Christian, morning he wasn't there. No. We, First I'm day saying, of the week. I'm saying, this, I'm saying Sunday morning because that is the calendar I live to now. But in the Roman no, no, calendar... No, 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 no. There, in your Bible it says, Sunday, he says there, in the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene goes. What is first day of the week? Sunday. Right. So now, there it is. Look, Friday, Friday night, Saturday day, Saturday You're basing night. Everything on Friday night because we now, in 20th day modern world, call Good Friday the day he was crucified. But we are not basing that on fact. It is tradition that we call it Good Friday. So this tradition came in from the devil. Is the devil misled you for 2,000 years? Because for 2,000 years the Christian world is common. So what if they celebrate it on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday night, whatever? Mm -hmm. The fact is that Jesus That's Christ was crucified. Such an elementary thing, elementary thing. The man was crucified on Friday, or you say, no, it was a Wednesday. And he rose on Monday morning if, right, if it right, had been three right, days right, three right, nights, right, which right, should right, be... Right, 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 right. If you're talking now as the first day of the week, what is the first day of the week in today's, in today's modern society? What is the first day of the week? Monday. So he rose on a Monday if we want to count today. Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. Right. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Right. He rose on Monday. Right. Three days, three nights. Now this John, that fellow of yours, John, he didn't know that Monday was to be the first day of the week. He didn't know. He only knew he's a no, Jew. because time has changed but since then. then it's 2,000 years you know, ago. The man who wrote that, he is writing for his people. No, Matthew wrote this. All oh, right. Also John. You see, also Luke wrote about the crucifixion. Yeah. So when Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb, right. he says it was the first day of the week. It was not Monday, in his mind, Sunday. in his mind, right, okay. right, so right, so Friday night. No, but Sunday. then it wasn't Friday, that's my point, you understand, no, but, you understand tell me where to start, tell me where to start, you tell me now, okay, come no, on. Okay, well, the thing is, what tell I'm, what me, I'm tell trying me, to compare me. is, then, no, no, right. you, Sabbath you, you, day was a Saturday. Give, yes. give me any day, come on, you tell me where to start, I want this three days and three nights. The man yeah, said, so I'm, I'm saying it was a Thursday night, not right. a Friday night. Right, 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 let's say now, what? Friday? Thursday night. Yeah. Thursday night he's put into the tomb. Hmm? Right. So Thursday night he's supposed to be in the tomb. Yeah. Friday day. Thursday night. Just to slow down, I'm just going to write this. Thursday night. Okay, I'm going to split in half so it's day and night. Right. Okay, Thursday night. Okay, Thursday we'll call this night. Thursday night. Right, okay, right. Now let's 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 okay. come. Let's come. Simple arithmetic. Mm -hmm. Thursday night. Right, right. Thursday night. Got okay. it one? Right. Okay, Friday. Friday day. Look, look. Friday day. Yes. Friday night. Yes. Saturday day. Yeah. Saturday night. Okay. Sunday morning, the okay. first day of the week. Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb, the tomb is empty. 
Yeah. It's still three and two. No, you got a Sunday now. Now we are Sunday. You see what I'm saying? That's my point. You know, he's not there. Damn it all, he's not there he Sunday morning. He's risen on the third day. <laughs> that morning he, he had he risen. Did, he didn't say on the third day. He said, for as Jonah was three days and three nights. He arose on the Sunday. So shall, to, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights. Yeah. Did he mean what he said? Three days and three nights means full 72 hours. Yeah. No, that's te so technical, man. That is so relevant. But this man is going out of his way to emphasize the thing, man. Damn it all, what is he wasting time? Three, 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 three. Why does he bore, bore everybody to death? In every room, in, 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 in every damn language. Says, one was Jonah, three da and three nachta, in the bake from the Khrot Fiswas, so shall the Sien from the man's three da and three nachta, damn it all, in Azulu, said, Wagoba, Chengo Chona, why says, Sis, in Senkom, is in Sugu, is in Tatu, Nobu Sugu, Ubu Tatu, can Chaloge, non Tata, Yomuntu, Uyagoba, Sebutunjin, Bum Saba, is in Sugu, damn it all, is repeating the word three, 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 boring four times, damn it all, he could have said three days, he could have said on the third day. He's going out of his way to tell you exactly like this. What happened to Jonah is going to happen to me. And the, now, fact that, that the fact that he would be gone for three days and three nights. Now, not gone, he would be alive and you expect him to be dead. No, he said he had to be alive. He said this miracle of Jonah is that he's alive. Okay, look, I'm, I just want to make something clear. <laughs> when, you, when you said, okay, I'll agree with you. In the same way that Jonah spent three days and three nights in the, in the big way. fish. That's, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, the point mm -hmm. he is making is in the same way that Jonah spent three days and three nights, whether Jonah was alive, whether... How no, many miracles happened? In the same way. No, you taking, you're going into details in that scripture and taking it out of context. Jesus is going into details, three, 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 three. Man, why does he want to go into details? He could have said on the third day. Oh, well, he could have, I suppose right. you can so interpret that, it that way. Why, why the hell he repeats the word three, four times? He's repeating the word three, four times. Because he was saying, as Jonah was three days and three nights, so, so he will be three days and three nights in the belly exactly, of the exactly, earth. Exactly, 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 exactly. So, you see, the man had himself prophesied, okay. Jesus, and he didn't fulfill it. As far as the time factor is concerned, he failed. As far as the miracles as aspect is failed. You see, the disciples of Jesus, they had heard okay. from hearsay, now. people talking. Mm. that the Master was hanged on the cross. Mm. They had heard from hearsay, people talking, that he had given up the ghost, his spirit had come out, he had died. Mm -hmm. They had heard from hearsay, people talking, that now he's dead and buried for three days. A man with such a reputation, we expect him to be stinking in his grave, because Mark chapter 14, verse 50, he tells us, that at the most critical juncture in the life of Jesus, all his disciples forsook him and fled. All! So I'm just going to read that quickly, just to remind myself. Yeah, please. please. Sorry, 14, please. 13. Four, that, uh, Mark, Mark chapter 14, verse 50. Mark 14, 15. The thing is, I'm not... I do know scripture reasonably well, but I'm not... I don't know, I can't just pull it out of my head. That's all right. Yes, please read it aloud. Uh, I may be okay, misquoting sorry. you. I might have misquoted you. See? Mark 14, 13. 50, 50. 15. 50. Oh, sorry, verse 14, 50. Right. Then he will show you a large upstairs room fixed up and furnished where you will get everything ready for us. For all his disciples forsook him and fled. Mm, no. Let me, uh, uh, Mark. Jesus eats the Passover meal with his disciples. Mark. 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 Luke. Mark. Mark 14, 50. Come on, man. I don't know what's wrong with you. Huh? Why, man? Young man, you need spectacles? Mark 14. 50. 50. Yes, oh, I keep Mark on telling apologies. you 50. I you said 13. I, I said 14, 50. Apologies. I thought you said 15. I didn't realize it's 50. Okay, my apologies. I'll get it now. Then they all forsook him and fled. Mm. No, I left him and ran away. Could you give me, could you give me, okay. All I want to know. Why do you think, 
Okay, look, okay, I'm going to read from verse 43, and that whole, okay, no, 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 says, no, 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 no. I'm going to read it from the top, because it says, okay. the arrest of Jesus. And immediately, while? Jesus was still speaking when Judas, one of the twelve disciples, no, 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 where, 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 where are you now? Verse 43. Verse 43, and immediately, while he was still speaking to Judas, right, right? With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, and, because we know Judas, we, we know that Judas was the one that betrayed Jesus, right? Right. Um, with swords and clubs, and sent by the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. The traitor had given the crowd a signal. The man I kiss is the one you want. Arrest him and take him away and the guard. Little, little slow. Read a little. Slow. As soon as Jesus, Judas arrived, he went up to Jesus and said, Teacher, and kissed him. So they arrested Jesus and held him tight. But one of those standing there drew his sword and struck at the high priest's slave, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus spoke up and said to them, Did you have to come with swords and clubs to capture me as though I were an outlaw? Day after day I was with you, teaching in the temple, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must come true. And then, as you said, then all the disciples left him and ran away. Right. right. Imagine right, this, right? Imagine right, this scenario. Right. You are with three of your friends down here at the corner of the temple. You're standing on the corner of what's this, Queen, Queen Street and Grace Street. You're standing there. Now, one of the friends, you don't realize it, but one of those friends has committed a heinous crime. He, he killed a family in Phoenix Park. He was driving out there for business and something happened and drove him to it. He took out a, a gun and shot a family of five. The police came and a man said, that's him there. And that friend was standing next to you, passively shaking your hand, or he was just talking to you. The police ran up, grabbed this man. They grab him, not just, excuse me, so it's coming. they grab him, physically take hold of him, put handcuffs on him, throw him against the wall, put the handcuffs on him and drag him away, throw him into the police van and run away, do they drive away? Would you not want to run away? Wouldn't you, would you not be terrified for your life? Of course. Now of do, you course. Think, do you not think there is the possibility that the disciples ran away out of fear for their lives? Of course. So then what well, is wrong with that? What I, did they do? Look, what I'm trying to tell you is, you are only confirming what I'm telling you, my son. Well, I'm telling you that you see, when they arrested Jesus, Okay. You know, the game was up. They were preparing for a showdown with the Jews. Jesus Christ told them at that upper room, at the Last Supper, that those of you, you know, who's got no swords, you must sell your garments and buy them. Where does he say this? Man, look, man, you, you can't be that green. No, I said in the Last Supper, Look, you know the Bible so well. No, look, you know the Bible so well, and now you speak like like an ignoramus. Look, you say you're trying to make things difficult for me. No, I'm, I'm telling you that at the Last Supper, at the Last Supper, if you remember reading your scripture, Jesus is asking his disciples that when I sent you out on your mission of preaching and healing, Mark 16, and I told you that you must not carry anything extra with you, no purse, no script, no staff, nothing. Yeah. Did you lack like anything? They said, no, we lack nothing. But now I tell you, those of you who have no swords, you must sell your garments and buy them. This is Mark 16 you're talking about. No, I don't it? know. I don't know the reference. You know, the, you know your Bible. I, if, if you ought to know. Okay. You ought to know your Bible whether I'm quoting correctly or not. Mm, okay. Oh, sorry, I've gone a bit far. Matthew, Mark, sorry. Okay, the fifth. Um, Amazing, man, such a simple scene, you know, the scene, uh, you know, you I, don't see, what, I don't, what, I don't, what, I don't what, know what, scriptures that well. But if you read that once in your life, damn it all, you can never erase it from your mind. The scene is there, all are sitting at the table, and Jesus starts, you said, look, mm -hmm. This is what happened. I sent you out. And did you lack anything? He says, no. But now I tell you, those of you who's got no swords, you must sell your garments and buy them. And one of them said, Master, we have two already. You haven't come across that yet? It's, it's, it's here, Matthew what? 9. I know the scripture you're no, no, talking no, no, about. Read it, read it, read it loud. Okay. Read it loud. Um, read it loud. I want to hear. I'm, I'm going to read to see where you look with the part. Like, I'm just going from verse 5. Just Okay. These twelve, I'm going to read from, verse, from the top of chapter 10 rather. Jesus called his twelve disciples together and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Psalm... No, we don't. What, what, you're wasting time. Come to the point, man, about those swords. Okay. The swords. I don't know if I'm in the right place for a start. Please, then, I, don't, I don't know scripture that well. I'm only 21. I'm, I'm, when I get to your age, I'll probably be as knowledgeable on the Bible no, as you. No, you'll be losing your memory then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, go and preach the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, 
bring the dead back to life, heal those who suffer from dreaded skin diseases, and drive out demons. You have received without paying, so give without being paid. Do not carry any gold, silver, or copper money in your pockets. Do not carry a beggar's bag for the trip, or an extra shirt or shoes or a walking stick. A worker should be given what he needs. When you come to a town or village, go in and look for someone who is willing to welcome you. No, there's nothing about swords or anything here. Mm -hmm. And behold, handmaid betrays, right? Then directs that on you. And nothing there about swords. But you don't remember the sword. Now I'll have to find it for you. Please do, because that you say you've you've misquoted scripture there, as far as I'm known. <laughs> well, I've just read the part you're telling me. I didn't. Well, I didn't give you that reference. You found it yourself. Yeah, did I tell you to the, open Mark? Did I tell you open Mark? No, that's the only, no, sorry, no, this is Matthew, not Mark. Did I tell you open, did I tell you open Matthew? Did I tell you? I only gave you the, the incident that yeah, this is not the last... Yeah, I know the only one I know of that in the Bible. There are four places, man. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, they all speak about the Last Supper. Okay. And I'm talking about the Last Supper. Right, here. Okay. Yeah. But now, he who has a money bag, let him take it. And likewise a sack. And he who has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say to you, that this which is written must still be accomplished on me. And he was numbered with the transgressors. Then they said, Lord, look, here are two swords. And he said to them, it is enough. Am I quoting correctly now? I'm just sorry, where are you? I'm going to read this for myself. I'm not denying what, I'm not disbelieving. It's Luke 12, chapter 22, 22, chapter 22, okay. verse 38. Read it loud, please. Okay. Well, then Jesus asked his disciples, When I sent you out that time without purse, bag, or shoes, did you lack anything? Not a thing they answered. But now, Jesus said, Whoever has a purse or a bag must take it, and whoever does not have a sword must sell his coat and buy one. For I tell you that the scripture says, He shared the fate of criminals must come true about me, because of what is written about me is coming true. The disciples said, look, here are two swords, Lord. That is enough, he replied. Right, right. So now Jesus is telling his disciples that they must arm themselves. Okay. So what does now, that mean to all In other words, he is going to resist. Because what do you use swords for, my son, except to fight? You don't use swords for paring bananas and apples. Okay. No, no, no. Swords. I'm listening to you. When you talk about swords, what is the purpose of a sword? You remember one of the one of the disciples he slashed off one guy's ear with the sword. Well, mm, 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 one of the disciples. You read it just now a little while back. Yeah, as soon as Judas arrived, he went up to Jesus and said, "Teach and kissed him." So they arrested Jesus and held him tight. But one of those standing there drew his sword and struck the heart. Right, right, right. One right, of those standing there. One of those who's standing where? Yes. How many people were in, in that temple at that time? And how many? Not temple. Were this is in the Garden of Gethsemane, my son. What's wrong okay, with you, man? I, I, just I, I can't understand. Man. What you have been reading the Bible for 21 years? I'm going to read it again. Jesus <laughs> was still speaking when Jesus... Okay, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Right, right, right. Really no, no, you're talking about the temple now. You said no, temple. Sorry, I, I said it's the Garden of Gethsemane. I apologize. The Garden of Gethsemane, you are correct. Jesus was still speaking when Judas, one of the twelve disciples, the one who was to betray him, arrived. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs and sent by the chief priests, right. the teachers of the law and the elders. Right. The traitor had given the crowd a signal, Judas that is, when the, sorry, the man I kiss is the one you want, arrest him and take him away under guard. As soon as Judas arrived, he went up to Jesus and said, teach and kiss him. So they arrested Jesus and held him. But one of those standing there drew his sword and struck at the high priest's slave. The high priest slave, you'll agree, is probably one of those names of swords and clubs, right? Right. Okay. But now the one who struck him was a disciple of Jesus. With him was a crowd armed with, um, sorry, uh, I'm just going to... The guy it. who struck the high priest's servant, Did he I was... Did say a, he was a disciple? Then they Daniel, don't. who was he? Because if There you, was a crowd there that Jesus was talking to. He so wasn't talking to the disciples only. It's got the inverse... Oh, uh, I, can't, I can't imagine such, such perversion in, in your reading. Such perversion I can't imagine. A Welsh guy, you know. I don't know, man. But uh, let me tell you so what. what if I'm Welsh? No, no. If I speak, it would make a difference, look, would it? It would. Wow. You see, look, you would understand the thing better. You'll have more humility. Let me tell you, reading <laughs> there, humility. you reading there, that the people had come with clubs and swords. Yeah. Right. Then who struck that guy with the sword? This is one of those standing there. Right. Who was that? 
How many people were standing with Jesus? Um, in the Garden of Gethsemane? Hmm? There were 11 guys there, man. Yeah, I exclaimed Jesus. Okay. 11 guys but were there. What I'm so saying now, is... They were armed at the upper room. You said they had mastered. There were two already. Yeah. Right? What did they do with the sword? They left them behind? Or they took them with? That was up in the room. Who said they took... Uh, the thing is... Okay. I'm not disagreeing with you. My point is, a lot of the things you discuss here are quite irrelevant. The details that... To me, each and everything is relevant. You see, if it's in the book of God, and if Jesus Christ took the trouble of having his word recorded in red, you got this word yeah. recorded in red, recorded that means, damn it all, they're wasting their time and all this doom and exercise. Mm -hmm. What for? So, everything is relevant. The thing is, it doesn't suit you, that's different. In the upper room, Jesus is asking the disciples that when I sent you out on your mission of preaching and healing, at that time I told you not to carry anything with you. Did you lack anything? They says, no, we lack nothing. But now I tell you, that those of you who's got no swords must sell your garments and buy them. So far so good? So then one of them said, Master, we have two already. So Jesus said, that is enough. Now they said, let's go. Get out from this place, because they were like sitting ducks in that upper room. If the Jews were planning his destruction, he would be sitting there all cooped up in a room. Let's get out of this place. So they walked to Gethsemane, five miles out of town. They are going to Gethsemane not to pray, because if they wanted to pray, they could have prayed in that upper room. If they wanted to pray, they could have gone to the temple of Jerusalem. They would take the stones throw away. Yeah. They wouldn't have to walk five miles out of town. Mm -hmm. When they reach Gethsemane, he tells eight of his disciples, he says, tarry here and watch with me, while I go and pray yonder. Now when he gets back, they're all asleep. While I, but he takes with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Yeah. First he makes a one defense at the gate, eight of his devoted disciples, yeah. people who are beating the best, that master we are prepared to die for you, master we are prepared to go to prison for you. Okay. Right. Now comes a crunch. He said, now you sit and watch. Keep guard. Watch means not the moon and the stars. Keep guard. Watch means keep guard. So eight at the gate. And he says, I will go and pray yonder. I, I, alone. But he takes with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he says, sit ye here and watch with me. He makes another line of defense. First eight at the gate another line of defense and then he goes further into the garden and he falls on his face and he prays to God. He said, Oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me. Meaning, remove the difficulty from me. But not as I will, but as thou wilt. The fact that he would have to die and go through the pain and if, suffering. If that is what you want, my Lord, I am prepared to submit. But I want you to save me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed to God. Oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup, means this difficulty, pass away from me. But if it is your will, I am prepared to submit. Mm -hmm. After beseeching God for help, now look, it appears that he didn't know that he was supposed to die. Because if he was supposed to die, he should have handed himself over to the Jews and says, come on man, you know, I have come for this purpose, go on, do what you want. But no, he takes his men outside the room, he goes and makes an, an outer line of defense, eight at the gate. If you have served in the army at all, you know those two years, yeah. conscription, well, you would know when your commander, your corporal says, hey, you, 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 you said, yeah, right, you say, follow me. You know what game that you are playing, you know, what is involved, you have that sense. Yeah. Now, does you be such a loony to have you there in the army? You know, they pass you through that you are a sane fellow and you know what they tell you, two plus two yeah. makes four. Now, he puts eight at the gate, keep guard, and he's telling them, watch with me, means keep guard, not pray with me. And he goes a little, goes further in, and he makes another inner line of defense. Yeah. And out of those three, at least two were armed with swords. He says it was those two, he says it wasn't two of the eight. They said they had two already. Yeah, they had two swords, okay. Right, so eight at the gate, with sticks and stones, they are keeping guard that the Where Jews... Where say they have sticks and stones? He's telling... And this is totally arbitrary he's, and irrelevant. He's, he's telling them, you carry everything with you. Now you carry everything with you. When I told you before to go out on a mission of preaching and healing, I told you not to carry anything. 
But now I tell you, you must carry your shoes, spare shoes, and your staff, and everything that you got to carry with and you. And you're supposed to because he feared for their lives, because for, for because them having been associated because with him. Because the things concerning me have an end, and now he's making a march to Gethsemane. At Gethsemane, he puts eight at the gate. To do what? To do what? Why did he take them to the garden? I want to know from you now. Maybe he wanted to be on his own in the garden. Damn it all, then why didn't he go on his own? Why does he have to drag 11 more people with him? Why, do, why, 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 why would you want to drag, if you want to go to the garden to go and pray, hmm? damn it all, couldn't you pray in that upper room? Is your God far away from that upper room? Is he far away from the temple? Why does he have to go to Gethsemane? Did he, have, did he have to have a reason to go to Gethsemane? Why does he do full silly thing in the middle of the night? Damn it, 11 guys, you're dragging 11 guys along. You must be a loony, man. Uh, who, who says? You must be a who loony. Says, who dragging says they didn't go with him out of free will? Who says, my Lord, where are you going? He said, I'm going to pray. Who says they didn't go with him? And who says that because they were with Damn him? Damn it, all, read that book, man. Read that book. You haven't read the book. You didn't even know this verse I'm talking about. I did, I knew where, I knew, I knew of what the you verse, knew? I didn't know where it was, I had to look for it. But didn't you know the sense of what I was telling you? Man, no, because you take it out of A little concept. child can understand, can remember. I really hope that, if, that you if, have you're, if, if I'm right, I really hope that God has mercy on you. <laughs> you see, you are so damn presumptuous, I'm telling you. You are sick, my son. I'm not you, sick. You are really sick, I can tell you, look, you are how, really how sick. How am I sick? You are, you see, what you have got, I must congratulate you. <laughs> I, I mean, I must congratulate you that you are a master at in mental masturbation. Ooh, you know, you know, this, this, what you're doing now is mental masturbation. You are masturbating mentally. Everything, man, time it all, you can't see this. You, you want me to open this for you? I have to find verses for you. And you are supposed to know in your Bible. I when you come talk, I'm not full. You see, uncle, I think this, this young man, I admire his, uh, his, uh, his mental masturbation. His, his uh, dogged determination. Right, uh, right. He didn't make the claim he knows everything of the Bible. Right. But I, and, and, and I admire him for wanting to try. Right. Uh, and I think that uh, it's admirable that he is willing to try. Right. He'll have to change his approach a little bit, not only really in discussion <laughs> with you, like he'll have to learn some of the things and make a note. Right. But I'm curious to find out which church he belongs to. I'm at Victory Faith Center in Pine Town. What's that? And who's the... What's that? What's that? No, I didn't hear that. Victory Faith Center. Victory um, you know, um, Victory Faith Center. Just around the corner from San Lim Center. So Victory and Faith who's Center. Who's the, uh, the uh, pastor? The pastor. Sean Dooley. Are you taking lessons from him? No, and um, this is why I'm saying I, I totally admire you. You 75 and man, you know the Bible better than I do. That is disgusting for me, man. For a Christian, I've been a Christian since I was ten or six. But you see, look, you're you're you're, the, you're pastor. He yeah. doesn't know the Bible better than me. Your Pope doesn't know the Bible better than me. It's a shame on you all. Damn it all. You I'm, support. Uh, no, 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 no. Listen, you, listen, I don't listen, know that listen, listen, know the listen, listen. I'm pretty telling you, pretty there, sure isn't a this is there isn't a Christian this is born. But uncle, this is what I'm getting at. Yes. Why don't we ask the young man to invite his father? Right. Bring that guy along and you sit and watch and yes. listen. Because this is discussion this is, is good. I mean, uh, it doesn't yeah. mean you're converting your religion. No, nobody yeah. asking you to do that. No, this but, is not. No, bring, bring that bring, pastor. Bring, bring your pastor. Oh, and you and what, my son, Grant, what you do, you just sit relaxed. Then you watch. You see, you'll be able to see things more ob objectively. Yeah. Can you I've been asked these about? questions and I didn't know that, but why don't you come along? You know, Surely he knows his Bible. Then it, so he won't be, be laboring me, trying to look. At this age, I have to look, find verses for you. It's yeah. not fair. It's not fair to me. I apologize for that. You see? So I said, look, then, in other words, everything now is mental masturbation that you're doing. Mm. And he I said, must bring, he must bring, invite his pastor. Mm. Please. Mm. Now, can, can, can you do that? I'll speak to him. I don't know how willing he be. Cause no, if he's not willing, there's something wrong with him and with your church. <laughs> well, see, what I'm going to say is the reason I came was not, um, I had no intention of trying to convert anybody or no, no, it was no, purely we, we, to, we, to, we, to, to find share, knowledge to myself. Share, to share, because to share. if, I mean, I see Muslims, as a salesman, I see Muslims in the street nearly every day and a lot of them, they sit there and I walk into a shop and I'm really friendly, I'm enthusiastic, I'm, I have no intention of trying to force them to sell what, whatever I'm selling, but a lot of them sit there and they go, and they want to talk to me. I, I learn the language, I say, Salaam Alaikum, you know, to be polite and yeah, to respectful. And, and they just, I, I, feel, I feel very offended that they won't even say good morning, like, you know, thank you, but we're not really interested. They just, like, mannequins. And I, want, I came here in the interest of finding out you know why? It's just you know, is it something in in their their belief that they refuse to or they they no, do no, not wish no, to? No, speak there are many them? things. I mean, you see, it's uh, you have people and you have people. Yeah, there are, there are many 
Christians, for example, mm -hmm. that feel sorry for me when, when they see us. They, they, they genuinely feel sorry. They're not bad people. Yeah, they feel sorry that I'm going to go to hell because I've not accepted Jesus. Yeah. Then there is the political angle. You know that that you are white, they are black. Yeah. You know, they see you. They say, "No, what, what does this white man want?" You know? Yeah. I, I'm not saying that everybody. You know, people have different levels of tolerance. I they are think. suspicious. Is this guy an inspector from yeah. some department? Right, 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 right. In the past, all the inspectors have been white. You know, is he some inspector of some yeah. department that has come I agree. In? The social the social reasons. That's right. We have been kept apart. But the yeah. one way of, of growing closer together, it doesn't mean conversion. It doesn't mean everybody's got to convert. It's for us to talk. Which and is what I came to which do. Which is what you think I yeah. admire you. I started off by saying I respect you and admire you Thank for you. that. But as a, as a young man, what is happening? You are, you are, you are... You are taking up Mr. D. That's time unintentionally by asking him to look up verses. Yes, I apologize for that. So what, that. what what you can do? Why you, I'm sure you have uh -huh. made notes and you've got a lot of food for thought as well. Yes. To speak to your pastor to say, look, uh -huh. and, and you're entitled to, just as I am entitled to speak to my priest to say, look, uh, you know, uh, this young man Sean asked me certain questions about Islam, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm not ashamed of it, but I, I'm not qualified enough to answer. Would you yeah. come along? Because he's willing to ask you those questions. So likewise, we would be more than delighted to, yeah. to invite uh, the gentleman to extend an invitation I'll speak to him, to him alone or if he was to come with several people. We don't or I'll come to your church. Or I can come to your church. He's too busy, yeah. Mr. D. That can come yes. I could meet you in Pansa and we could meet at the church. Yes. At the church? I yeah, don't talk to I'll the whole congregation. Some. Yeah, because no, that, you see the thing is, I get very lucky if you two gentlemen stood in front of me now, I, um, you know, as a person, it's not, you know, I don't know if everybody's like this, I feel very lucky now. Um, I start to break out in a sweat and I start to understand because um, that's why I wanted to either speak to your son or yourself individually, you know, one on one because then, you know, I get three people shouting things at me and I'm talking and I'm thinking, like, I'm getting very, like, I start shaking. But at one on one, I feel I can communicate and my intention is not in any way to be, um, you know, aggressive, that we can communicate because I, I realize that probably very little I say is going to, con is going to convince you that I'm right and very little I can do to convince yeah, you. Because, you know, th like I said to your son yesterday, if um, you're a, a drunkard, you're, okay, um, an, an, an Arabian person, you're in a gutter somewhere, and you came to the point where you felt you had to turn to God, you wouldn't walk away down the street to a European church, you'd go to a mosque. True. And if I was in the same position, I wouldn't walk away down the street to a mosque. So that is the social difference. So, but, but those are, uh, and those uh, barriers are harder to overcome than legal barriers. Yeah, social but social barriers are, are bigger I mean, than life. They are being overcome. I mean, yeah, five, five because years. Because I wouldn't have come in here if I'd been a racist at all. Exactly. I want to come here. Racist. Man, I love from, everyone. I've nothing against a, anyone. Take from a political point of view. You know, five years ago, four years ago. Yeah, we did. I had office here five years ago. Oh yes, we did. But oh, you'd, yeah. you'd be arrested for having a say a flag, a communist flag. You'd be arrested by that. Oh, yeah, government. okay, I see. But now today, now, now five years ago, if you told somebody, no, no, we can talk to everybody. Said no, no. But now we've just bought a ship from Russia. The, the South African Navy yeah. has bought a ship, and then the Russian sailors and captain were there to hand over the ship. They were shaking hands. And yeah, it's it. So times change. Political differences have been solved. But five years ago, as you said, no ways the person would have even turned to Russia to mm. have a look at. Agreed. Because they worked out it's about a third cheaper than to build a ship today. Right, right. To buy this right. big ship, and this is going to be able to. I think it can even break ice or whatever. Uh -huh. yes. big uh -huh. Uh -huh. I asked everything. Right? But you know, I saw there all the Russian people handing over Russian dog. The mascot is going to remain with right, the right, ship. Right, right, <laughs> right. But this unheard of. Five years ago, we wouldn't even. You would arrest the guy if right. he had that, that flag. Common, yeah. common no, emblem. We don't support communism. I'll just give an example. I agree, I agree with the example. example. So likewise, I'm not saying we have to convert each other, but we, we haven't sp sat and spoken to each yes. other for centuries. Yeah, I want so to come and sit down and be friendly. Yeah. I want to leave here with a smile on no, my no, face. We are friends. Yeah. We are friends. Well, this yeah. discussion is healthy. Mm. The argument is healthy. Um, healthy. I've learned so much from you. Yeah, what really what you should you. do is we should pursue this further. Yes. Otherwise, otherwise it's a waste of the exercise. Completely. Otherwise, say, well, it's Feet a nice on. feeling. Yeah. So invite uh, over your priest or anybody from the congregation if the priest doesn't want to come. But it leaves a question mark in your mind that yeah. why he's not willing to come. Well, because the thing is, what, is what I'll say is because, um, I mean, I'm not going to make excuses for him. If he's a busy man and he says, no, I'm going to go sit with him and pose questions and then come back to you. So this is what he yeah, told no. me. That's why we are leaving the invitation open. We're not saying mm. next Tuesday or Wednesday. If he's a yeah. busy man, he'll open his diary and say, is that yours? This is your business card? Yeah. yeah. Could I grab yes, it? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Thanks. He can, open, he can open his diary and say, look, the earliest I can fit you in is November. Right. And at 9 o'clock at night because I'm busy in the day. Yeah. Right. Fine. We'll come. Right. Uh, I said, come to my church. I said, right.
Great. Now look, uh, uh, go on. Go. <laughs> Now, there is one little problem I have in the Bible. I yeah. want you to, maybe you might Free throw some light on it. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the analogy is that your father and your mother, let's say they are alive, yeah. and they're sleeping. They're sleeping. In the middle of the night, a burglar gets in. Yeah. And your dad grapples with the burglar, but the burglar is too powerful. Yeah. He flows your dad, he sits on his chest and strangling him to death. Mm -hmm. Your mother comes to the rescue. And she saves his life. Kills them. Kills them. No, no. Oh, not kills them. Just saves his just life. Saves, saves their father's life. Okay. Now your dad says, "Go on, chop off your mother's hands. Chop off her hands." He said, "Daddy, are you joking?" <laughs> he said, "No, my son, I'm serious." He says, "Daddy, have you been taking some drugs or alcohol? Have you been drinking?" Mm. He says, "No, my son. This is." From the book of God, the Holy Bible, the Bible, the good God, good God tells us that we must chop off your mother's hand. So, Daddy, no God can give you such a thing. You know, this woman, your mother, yeah. she gave you so many children, you know, you tell. And she gave you pleasure, endless pleasure for 40 years. Mm. And now she saved your life. A Hindu would be prepared to worship her. This such a mother, such a woman, he will be prepared to worship her. And we can understand. Yeah. His, his sentiments, you know. He said, the woman saved my life, she's a goddess. She's my god. We can understand, appreciate his feelings. You, dad, you're telling me to chop off her hands. You know, this is lunacy of the highest order. You agree? Yes. If you said, God says so, then you would also say that, look, this God also is a loony. If the, a God gives you such instructions for saving a person's life, you chop off her hands, I said, that God is also loony. Daddy? He says, my son, open the book. Deuteronomy, open, open. Deuteronomy, chapter 25. Says, this is the instruction from God. Deuteronomy, chapter 25. Deuteronomy, chapter 25. Got it? Got it? Chapter 25? Yeah. Right? Verse 11 and 12. Read it aloud. If two men are having a fight, and the wife of one tries to help her husband by grabbing hold of the other man's genitals, show her no mercy, cut off her hand. Show her no mercy, cut off her hands. This woman, she saved your father's life. Okay. Chop off her hands. Is that sanity or lunacy? That's the law from the Old Testament. Whatever. whatever. Is that the law of God? Of the Old did, Testament. Did, did God give such a law? Yes, he laid it down for the Jews and for the Jewish nation at that time. Right. Jesus says, think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. You know the word law in Hebrew is Torah. Yeah. Right. The law or the prophets. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm come not to destroy but to fulfill. Mm -hmm. For verily I say unto you, heaven and earth shall pass away, but one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Yes. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, or shall teach men so, shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall teach and do shall be called great. Okay. Right. This is the law which he confirmed. Don't yeah. think that I'm come to break the laws and the commandments. Yeah. Not the least bit out of the law is to go out. And this is supposed to be the word of God, inspired to Moses. Yeah. Right? So, did God inspire such, such nonsense that the woman who saved your father's life was chopped off her hands? Um, the way I see it, is that in the Old Testament, God, because, okay, you'll understand that God is a spirit being. You agree? Yes, yes. He is perfect in, in, in every way. He is perfect in everything. So therefore, because of that perfection, God cannot allow imperfection in His presence. Right. So He could not come down to the people and rule them. So right. He had to set a law. Right, right, right. So Beautiful. He had to live by the law. Right. And if they disobeyed that law, I know there are other, other places where people were killed. People were set to death, put to death for having broken the law. You'll agree? Right, 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 right. There are other places where right, it right, says right. similar things. Not necessarily showing no mercy kind of hand. More serious in terms of people were killed no, no, for No, it. for doing a kindly act, a, a helpful act. Saving, uh, okay. saving a person's life. Yeah. And then you, you say, if you, if you break the law, not. Sabbath day, you are not supposed to work. You picked up, they found you picking up firewood. Yeah. So. According to the law, stone the man to death. Mm. They killed him. Right. I'm not contesting that. 
I am contesting that, look, this woman is your benefactor. She saved your life. Yeah. See, by any means, suppose you know, somebody was grappling with me, and I'm just killing me, and if you hit the guy too hard yeah. to save me, and that guy died, you know, they can't hang you for that. No, because I was huh? just saving you. Right. And, and the, the actually, when the court case comes along, they said, look, this man was on the verge of dying. Poor fellow. I saw him going blue in the face. You know, the guy was throttling him, and I slapped him too hard, and his eardrum broke, and he died. You know, yeah. I'm sorry for that. They can't hang you for that. They can't punish you for that. Now, God Almighty, we know He's a merciful God. He's kind and compassionate to the animals. Verse 4. Read verse 4 of the same chapter. Beautiful. Read verse 4 of the same chapter. Read it aloud. Do you not, verse from 25, chapter 25. Right. Muslim knocks when you're using it to thresh grain. Right. Beautiful. Now look. You see the Jews were muzzling the, the mouth of the ox. Yes. When they're threading the corn, you see, there's to help the corn all put down, and then the ox walks on it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so to loosen the grain. Mm -hmm. But in the process, the ox poor thing, you know, will have a bite. That's it. That's so why they muscle the ox. No. They used to have a bite. So the Jew says, no, we shall not have a bite. So God is compassionate, is merciful to animals. Okay. He said, no, don't muzzle the ox. Let it have a bite. Man, how much can it eat? You know, while the thing is working whole day, mm -hmm, he, he starts trying to get a few grains and the thing falls out of his mouth. He's got a few grains in the mouth. Mm -hmm. After half an hour, 15 minutes, it gives another bite. What damage is it doing? Be kind and compassionate to the animal. Yes. You know, don't muzzle the ox. Yeah. I, can, I can feel that the merciful God could have given that. You know, he's compassionate to animals as well as to human beings. Okay. But the same God, in six verses onwards, a woman who saves a man's life, chop off her hands. Now, I can't, I can't imagine the same God talking, it must be lunacy of the highest order. And you agreed that this is not God's word. If, if the God says chop off her hands, this can't be from God. It can't be the words of Moses, unless Moses was also a lunatic. And it can't be from you. You can't say such a thing to anybody. So, so what I'm trying to demonstrate to you is this, that this is not the word of God. You see, the word of God must be consistent. You know, it must be for your benefit. Right? Now, a, a person who's done you a kind act, how can you go and chop off that person's hand? Then this book speaks about God in some filthy, filthy dirty ways. He speaks about God Almighty, that is riding little chirups. You know what's a chirup? Chirup. You know so is that he's? Riding little cherubs. Riding cherubs. Yeah, cherubs. The little angels. Right. That you see an angel. You see in the art gallery. You when know, you see the pictures, mm. Western art. Yeah, I've seen the you pictures. Know, you know, a beautiful woman, well proportioned with wings. You know, 36, 24, 36 with <laughs> wings. But when you look at the pic, the, the art, it, she appears to be about 25, 30. A cherub is a 12-year-old thing. You know, just crisp with a breast just sprouting now. That's a cherub. And God Almighty, His means of transport is riding cherubs from place to place. He rides on cherubs. You know that? He flies on the cherubs. How? How does He fly on cherubs? He's riding them on their back or on their stomach. You know, the cherubs are with, uh, with wings. Is she flying like this and God is sitting on top of her, huh? holding her by the breast to maneuvering her? Or does He, she's on her back and doing the backstroke with her wings? In your Bible, do you know that? God is riding little children, little girls. Have you seen that? Have you seen that in your Bible? Whereabouts is it? It's in the Lord. Oh, no, I give you, I give you just to my son. Right. 2 Samuels, 2 Samuels 22 11. 2 Samuels 22 11. 2 Samuels 22 11. Verse 11. Read it, my son. He flew swiftly on his winged creature. Uh huh. He traveled on the wings of the wind. Uh huh. That's it. Right. Oh, sorry. Right. He covered right. himself with darkness. Right, 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 right. Full of water. Now this winged creature, you see, this is now read it in your Bible. This is one of yours. What is this winged creature? Uh, second Samuel It's not riding locusts or doves. What is this winged creature? Two Samuels eleven. Two Samuels chapter twenty two verse eleven. Read it aloud, my son. He mounted the cherubim and flew. Ah, what is the cherubim? Cherubim, cherubim, is it? 
What's the word there? He mounted the? Cherubim. Cherubim. What is cherubim? Those angels that sing praises to him all day. Right, right, right. So he's riding them. Yeah. Is this your God? My it's God. God. It's my his God. prerogative. If he has all the authority on earth to do what, on earth and in heaven to do what he wants. The Quran tells us that God permeates the whole universe. Yeah. You see? He's nearer to you and to me than our jugular veins. To everybody, every creature, yeah. whether you're on the Mars or Jupiter or the Moon, He is nearer to each and every one of us, nearer than our jugular veins. He doesn't need transport to move from here to Johannesburg or to America or there, and He uses young girls, 11 year, 12 year old girls. Who says a cherubim is a 12 year old girl? Where'd you get this from? You, your dictionary, my son? Your dictionary? Your dictionary? You base their life on no, a dictionary no. anyway. Tell me that look, man. Words, don't they have any meaning in your language? Yeah, words, it doesn't mean every word in there is, is no, correct. No, no, no. When the Bible says cherubim, yeah. what did the Jews understand? Can we bring a dictionary? I want to see where it says cherubim. I've never looked at cherubim in the dictionary. It just seems like pretty preposterous to me. Uh, it is preposterous. That God writing little girls. Mm -hmm. Ah, there's a di I don't know, that's not the dictionary. I had the dictionary here. Collins dictionary. No, this is a dictionary. It's not here. It is? Collins, is it? Ah, right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't see it, my son. Right. See, Chirub. C H E R U B. Chirub. Chirubim is plural. Chirub. C H E R U B. C H. C H E R U B. Chirub. Cherub, uh -huh. cherubs or cherubim, it's quite theological. Yeah. A member of the second order of angels, uh -huh. often represented as a winged child, an innocent child. Winged child, winged child. So how old is the child? How old is no? How old is the? How old is the child? I'm telling you, eleven year old, twelve year old, how old is or child? maybe six year old. So are you going to tell me that six year old entering that, puberty? No, 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 Please. no, no. If he's riding cherubs, this God Almighty. For his transport, this is his transport. Yeah, so riding cherubs, I said that's little girls. Does he do that all the time? Whether he's one instance here. Whether you commit adultery once, he or you do three hundred. cherubim and flew. He saw right. it on the wings of the wind. Once he did it. No, no. And that was a, that is, this is a song of praise, man. It was written by a man who was not perfect. But the, the, who dictated it? Did God dictate that? Is it the word of God? As translated by man, yes. Is the word of God? That means now he did say cherub, that he's riding cherubs even once. If you ha have intercourse with a prostitute once, you are an adulterer. Go on, am I right? Sorry, say that again. If, if you I'm commit adultery with an adulteress once, yeah. you are an adulterer. Okay. Right? If you do it 365 days of the year, you are still an adulterer. Yeah. Right. God Almighty riding no, cherubs. That is, please. Right. Sorry, that is okay. a bad now, example. Now, look, go on, before you go. I give you a warning. For example, yeah. I said, look, there's a box there. Yeah. And if you look into the box, you'll be a dead man. I'll chop off your head. Okay. Right. But not only you, there are 50,000 people here. And I tell them all, I said, look, anybody looks into that box, I'll chop off your head. Right. Now, you are the first guy. You know, inquisitiveness. Man is inquisitive by nature. Curious. You looked into the box. And I can't forgive you. So I chop off your head. Okay. It is harsh. It is cruel. But you, as soon as it... Go ahead! What? Sorry, sir. I forgot. Please. Father, my Lord, forgive me. Am I right? I should be forgiving. I said, okay, look, hmm. look out. I want you to the rest of you. But if I want to make you an object lesson, I chop off your head. Yeah, sir. Right. But in that case, I'm saving 50,069. There are 50,070 here, people. Yeah. But I allow each and every one of you to pass, each and every one of you to look into the box. It might take a week, single file, to look into the box. 50,070. Yeah. The merciful God, He waits for all the 50,070 to pass, look into the box, and He kills them all. He widows 150,000 women, and He often has 100,000 children. Is that the work of a merciful God? 
If you did that, Sean, I say you are a bloody idol. You are worse than Hitler. Am I, am I right? Hitler incinerated six million Jews. His hatred for the Jews. Yeah. He had his logic. His evil logic he had in doing what he did. But God Almighty, the merciful God, the loving Father in heaven, will he slaughter 50,070 persons for looking into a box? No, of course not. Well, read. Read your Bible. Open. 1 Samuel 6.19 1 Samuel 6.19 1 Samuel chapter 6 verse 19 Yeah, I'll read it. Right, read it loud, please. The Lord killed 70 of the men of Beth Shemesh because they looked inside the covenant box and the people mourned because the Lord had caused such a great yeah. slaughter among them. Right. Now, 50,070, your book says here, your Bible says 50,070. 50,070. Why you say 50,000? Huh? See, open this book of yours, this Bible of yours. That's the damn cheat, man. Cheating. From 50,000 they come to 70 now. Oh, why don't you, maybe this is 50,000. Huh? Are you reading correctly? Gold. I'm just checking here. Uh -huh. This one Samuel chapter six, verse nineteen. Did it last Yeah, okay, yes. How many? 2070. Yeah, this right. is right here as well. This is 50,070. Is it uh, definitely 1,000? It says, says here... Um, no, no, this one, you read only 70. Yeah. You read only 70 there. No, I'm, gonna, I'm explaining why I got it wrong. But God struck down some of the men of Beth Shemesh, putting 70 of them to death because they looked into the Ark of the Lord. But 70 it, again? Next to 70. No, no. Just next to 70, it says double. Oh. And then at the bottom, a few Hebrew manuscripts, most Hebrew manuscripts and. I don't know what the word is, Sept, Two Hergans, right. 50,070. So right. it's probably the right. same, they've just used the same. Uh, what is it? Know, same again. Mm -hmm. What? 50,070. No, no. 50, now I ask you, is this the quality of a merciful God, the loving Father in heaven? If you look at God in the Old Testament, no, no. He, God is God, He's an unchanging God. He doesn't change. He's a loving father. Is he loving only after two, after six thousand, four thousand years after Adam? He becomes a loving father, or was he loving father from the beginning? Is he a loving God from the beginning, or he became a loving father? He acquired this quality. You heard of a little saying called "spare the spare the rod and spoil the child." I, I appreciate that, but now, man, you make an object lesson. I don't spare the rod. So the first guy, if I want to be kind to the fifty thousand and sixty-nine. The first guy I chop off his head. Yeah. But I'm saving, before. that's co common sense. 50,069. I'm saving 50,069. But if I am a, a sadistic God, <laughs> you know, I watch as I do. Tell me, come on, come on. Thousand, it's all 50, 10, 000, 000, 000, 000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, and 1, 2, 50, 60, 69, 70, the whole bank lot. And then I kill them all. Now, is that sanity? Is that what I'm trying to do? I don't question God. God knows no, better than no, God is omnipotent. He is all. He is all powerful. He knows. Does everything. he do silly things? Your God does he do silly things? I don't question him. Does he do silly things? I don't question no, him. Does he do silly things? Your God. It might seem silly to me, but maybe it was no, no. purposeful. For does him. he? Does he sleep with little children? No. Does he have sex? No. Why not? Can't he do that? Because he's a spirit being and he's omnipotent, all but powerful. But a spirit being, does he need a, 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 a vehicle of yeah, riding a You really do. A spiritual being, he kills, kills 50,070 persons for looking into a box. Is it such a crime? But Lot, he committed incest with his daughters. He didn't do anything. You know that? Lot. Reuben, he had, he, he yes, had sex with his mother. Story. He had sex with his mother. God said nothing. Right. Judah had intercourse with his daughter-in-law. And he became bastard children, the great grandfathers of your God Jesus Christ. Please children of incest. As well. Children of incest. Your great the great he's, grandfathers he's of your God. In Samuel's, he talks about one of the sons of David raping his sister. God said nothing. The other guy, he rapes ten of his father's wives wholesale, and God said nothing. But for a guy looking into the box, 
he goes and kills 50,070 persons. Is this in the book of God? Is this God okay. talking? Please try this in the bin. I renounce Christianity, man. Yes, you really. You, you just... I don't, I don't question God. He is my almighty father. Thank he has given me salvation. No, you now you have to become a Muslim. I don't question God. He is my almighty father. Thank he has given me salvation. No, you now you have to become a Muslim. Not a chance. Can I no, you have renounced Christianity. I will you not. can't become a Hindu. I will never, no, I will second never second. renounce the name of Jesus Christ. No, no. He is my Lord you and have, Savior. You said you renounced Christianity. Everything. You said throw this into the bin. And I, I was just using it as an example. No, no, I do no, not. No, 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 I do not. not. That's what I said. That you are being in mental masturbation. This is mental masturbation. I don't agree with you. No, no, this is mental masturbation, my son. You, you said just now here. clearly. I didn't force you. You said throw this into the bin. I renounce Christianity. Did you say that? No, but did I you did you utter the words? Convenient. Did you utter the words? Yes. These are words of blasphemy. You uttered them. My God will forgive me. He loves me. Jesus said. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost will never be forgiven. I not in this world, not Ghost. in the next. So in other words, now you have God as a witness. You told me this. I said, throw this into the bin. I threw it into the bin. And he said, I renounce Christianity. Now the choice is for you. Either you accept this, this book. Man, is all... Can't you see? After... Man, fa fa father raping, father having sex with his daughters, son with his mother, father-in-law with his daughter-in-law, brother with his sister. What does it say in Romans? One of the sons with his ten mothers in a row. What does it say in Romans three three twenty-three? I want to know whether this is the word of God. What does it say in Romans three twenty-three? What does it say? For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, no one is perfect. Therefore, they will sin. They have no choice but to sin. No, no, no. Your book contradicts him. Look contradicts him. Everybody hasn't sinned. Everybody Jesus, has sinned. No, no, no. Jesus said he's come for the sinners. Yeah, I'll right, say. Right. So look, so you have my Bible back. I don't uh -huh. need to in there. No, 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 that's, that's over now. That's over. No, but could have no, my Bible no, no, back. No, 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 I must have it no, back. No, no, you said, you it. said throw it into the bin. Okay, could I have right. it back? No, you can't. Why not? No, you gave it to me. I didn't give it to you. You gave it to me to throw it into the bin. Well, could I have it back? No, you can't. You can't Please, have, no, you can't. can I get on my knees? No. Please, no, I must have no, that back. No, 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 look, 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 look. You... Please. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll speak to my, my secretary. Right, here. Okay. I hope this was sufficient yeah. for you, right? Okay, man. Thank you, brother. I, <laughs> Ibi, yes, look, I want you to be the judge now. I showed him things from the Bible about God riding cherubs. Yes. No? All right, he's got, you know, God can do anything. I said, damn it, to ride little girls, you know? He's got no other way, means of transportation. Then he killed 50,070 guys, you know, for looking into a box. Mm. And all this incest and rape in, in the Bible. He said, I renounce Christianity and throw this, my Bible, into the dustbin. Did you tell me that? Uh, yeah, I was huh? pumped, sir. I right, right. So he gave me the Bible. Read Cherubim there. Cherubim. There, just, just read it. Cherubim. Out loud, please, if you would. Right. Uh, it's a theological term, a member of a second order of angels, often represented as a winged child. Second meaning, an innocent or sweet child. Where does it mention girl? Where does it mention sex or gender? So it's a male boy. No. No, and the child, it says child, boy, child can be a boy or a girl. Yeah. Right. Doesn't so he could be riding little boys. Is he riding little boys if not girls? doesn't say either, that's what... No, no, he says chill, point. he's right. You jumped in to presume that he's running little girls, so then you say, oh, but they, they, then he's probably you're, raping them as well. You're, you're, you're a Western artist. Every angel that you see is a woman angel in your works of art. Am I right? You go to the art gallery, man, Durban Museum Complex. Yeah. Have you been there? Have you been there? Uh, yes, years ago. Right. When I was you, know, there, you go. Okay. Here, this is now. And you see all the angels that you see in the art, yeah. they're all women, well proportioned with wings. Yeah. Right. If you go to the Holy of Holies, St. Peter's in Rome. I've been there. Yeah. St. Peter's in Rome. And they have two cherubims in flesh colored marble, absolutely naked. Yeah. And they are appear to be about twelve to fourteen year old. With the breast just sprouting. Yeah. Absolutely naked. Sorry. And they say these are the cherubims. Cherubim is a plural of cherub. Yeah. There's a woman, there's not a male. Mm -hmm. There's not a male boy. Yeah. It's a w girls, beautiful girls. Mm -hmm. This one here, child, when you see the t pictures of this child angel, does that child angel look like a boy or a girl? You have seen men in your works of art. So you are basing everything on presuming that a cherubim 
they're cherubim that you saw at St. Paul's as a girl on, on one man's interpretation of cherubim. No, no, cherubim. Your, your interpretation, if it's a boy... No, not my interpretation. No, I, well, I do not perceive... Okay, but what, what is the point? What the is point the point? Is that, uh, whether it's is uh, a boy or a girl? make it any difference. No, because um, um, what Mr. Dida said was, um, is which I... Uh, in a lot of ways, I will agree with you that it seems pretty... Um, not absurd, but uh, odd that God would use cherubims Right. Um, after, after saying he's om omnipresent, mm -hmm. you know, in, in uh, where David writes the song, in, in no, 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 we, be, we accept that. We accept that. We accept that. I'm telling you myself. Um, that yeah. He permeates the whole universe. Yeah. He doesn't need. Um, he doesn't need helicopters to move around. Well, obviously, I mean, right. So he's everywhere. He's present. Yeah. But now, when he yeah. writes cherubims, whether it is a boy child or a girl child, damn it all, is just as ridiculous. To ride a boy child is worse. So your point was that... To ride a boy that, is worse. That he's that giving the sodomists. You are in America, there's 25 million. He's giving them a cue that you can ride boys now, little boys. No, no. Damn it all. No, no, he's but... taking the, the, whole, the whole thing, the, that whole but, psalm, that, that whole song of praise that David wrote out of context. You're taking one verse and taking it out and then putting it in an entirely different context and calling what it... What is the... Riding a cherubim, what is the context? Killing those 50,070. And on that note, you said, look, I renounce Christianity and throw this into the dustbin. You I did that out of frustration because you've taken the Bible out of So I congratulated him and he says, now it calls for a conversion. I will not convert to Islam. No, no, then to Judaism or Hinduism. Yeah. Become a Hindu, if you like. I'm not a religious person. I don't want to call myself a, a, a whatever. Jesus Christ has set me free. I mean, I was involved in... Free from what? Free from what? From Satanism, you, from drugs, from, from the... You, 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 to to? you, you were committing adultery. Eh? You were committing adultery before you joined the church. Before you were born again. Yes, I was. Right, you were an adulterer. Well, no, I, okay. That's one thing I never you, did. That's one thing I never did. But you sodomized boys? No. Then what did you do? I what never had what horrible thing did you do? What horrible thing did you do? I think, I think that, uh, you see, this is, uh, we don't have a problem with the teachings of uh, Jesus Christ. On him. The problem is that what Mr. Didat is showing you is his teachings got perverted. Uh, and then that is where the problem is because his true teachings are not being followed by the Christians. Jesus said, Do not eat uh, pork. Right. He yeah. never ate it in his life. None of his disciples ever ate this flesh or swine. Jesus said, Circumcision. Yeah. But do you think, do you how, think how, when did, how did Jesus pray? The, the manner in which he prayed? You don't pray. You're not circumcised the way he was circumcised. Um, we'll, we'll look at circumcision, for example. I've looked at circumcision. I've come, I came close when I was 16. I was going to be circumcised. Right. But I just, um, I looked at circumcision and I said, okay, you know circumcision is fulfillment of the law. Right. Oh, for Jews. Okay, in terms of um, who I am as a person, socially, I'm not Jewish. And I didn't say, well, I'm not Jewish. So is is that what, what God says? That the law he gave circumcision is only for the Jews, because Jesus said. Romans, yes. Jesus says, not Jesus, your God. He says, think not that I'm come to destroy the law of the prophets. I'm come not to destroy, no, but to fulfill. Said before, but that's right, not the point. Right. So to fulfill means to fill up, not to take out. In your language, hmm. fulfill means to fill up, not to take out. Yeah, and, complete. And he said, whosoever shall break one of these least commandments, circumcision was not the least among the Jews. It was a major commandment. God Almighty, I'm Jewish. God, but you follow the you follow a Jewish God. Your God is Jew. All his disciples were Jews. Who God God God? is Jewish. Your God Jesus was a Jew. Yeah, Jesus was Jewish right. because he was born. He was born to a Jewish family. Right. So your God is Jew. Damn it all! And all his disciples were Jews. Twelve out of twelve, hundred percent. Yeah. Right. So now you're following a Jewish code of laws. But now you have perverted it. I no longer live by the law because Christ has, been, has, has set me free by his blood. Now, did Jesus say that? Yes. Where? Show me. Um, Show me. I'm Show me. Wait, Show me. You could pass Show me your concordance because I'm not going to find it yet. But one big step he took. He threw his Bible away and he renounced <laughs> Christianity. He's a frustrated young man. But I admire him. He's, 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 he's thinking. You've, you've made me think, you've made me think yes. a lot. I, I really, I thank you for this. No, I haven't done enough yet. No, I haven't. No, I want to meet your we, pastor. We actually don't play a numbers game, you know, that, you know, this, this month we converted so many people. And so that's not our yeah, no. way we, we publish Book Mr. D. That's mm. thoughts and so on. Just people must think and people must follow it's what their fantastic. hearts say. It's
because I didn't come here to try and convert anybody or exactly. this is purely out of an interest but on find that one that's interesting what Mr. Um, uh, I'm sure I think uh, is there just very quickly I'll read this this book of yours yes I find quite very interesting this combat kit yes, it actually made me think last night when I was reading it, I was standing outside waiting for someone to pick me up and there were some Jehovah's Witnesses walking across the road, walking into a block of flats. So right. It actually made me laugh right. at myself. Well, not right. laugh at myself, but right. I just laughed to myself. Right. Um, it, you know, in um, when Jesus was talking to the crowd at one time, um, they asked him, which is the greatest commandment? And he says, love the Lord your God. And then after that, it's uh, love us as you love yourself. Is there anything equivalent in the Quran or in Muslim scripture? Yes. Because one thing I was quite curious was, um, I find, actually, it's really, I'm, I'm laughing at myself. It's really ironic when I spoke to Sam this morning, and you are the man who wrote all these books. Yes. <laughs> I didn't realize I was talking to the author. Yes. Um, how can you be so militant? Jesus was militant. I don't agree. He came in love. When, when they went to the Garden of Gethsemane... I'm Gethsemane. also doing it in love, by God. You see, look, I love you. Go on. But now, if it's my nature to, at times to roar, I'll be a hypocrite and start bleeding like a goat. Yeah. You know, when I think, look, I have a point. So, I just kind of, I'm natural. Myself, Jesus, you, you Jesus. get. Right. So yeah. now I accept that. Jesus Christ also. You know, I said, yeah, you wicked and adulterous generation, yes. you generation of wipers, you white sepulchres, you, you hypocrites, whatever. you fools, yeah. you damnation of hell. Now look, this is also, a, is a loving, to me, he's, he's one of the meekest of prophets. Yeah. You know, the Prince of but he, Peace. Never, he never prophesied. He, you know, he's he is so so humble and so meek. At how times. can you how, how do you call him a prophet when he never prophesied? Who Jesus? Jesus never prophesied. No, he did prophesy about himself. He said, "What's going to?" No, that's the only time he prophesied. No, can you call him a prophet from one prophecy? No, no, no. no. I prophesied no. over a friend, and it came true. And there doesn't. John the Baptist. Prophecy. John the Baptist. Do you accept? He's the greatest of the Israelite prophets according to Jesus. No, I Jesus said. Among those born of women, there has not risen another greater than John the Baptist. Did he say that? He said that's right. Jesus said, among those born of women, there has not been born another greater than John the Baptist. Yeah, well you saw my prophets. Yeah. That means the greatest of the Israelite prophets, John the Baptist. That's what he said. Yeah. Unless he was speaking tongue in cheek. You know, he had meant something else. Yeah. No, he said that. And yet, John, what did he prophesy? He said, uh, prepare you the way for that. Yeah, well, the guy is there already. He's there. What is that to prophesy? He's there. He didn't know at that time, no, did he? No, no, no. Until that time in the River Jordan when he baptized Jesus Christ. No, still he didn't know. He didn't know. Then it was only after that when the Spirit descend, uh, descended on still Jesus. Still he didn't know. He did at that time. I'm no, sure he, he must have known. You see, what happens now? Go on. You see, you're reading into the book. You see, when G John the Baptist was in prison yeah. before his beheading. Yeah. He sent his disciples to Jesus, wanting to ask him whether he is the person they are waiting for, the Messiah, yeah. or seek we another. Yes, okay, I agree with you. So, right. the, the so me, that means now, towards the end of his life, it appears that he didn't hear the voice from heaven. You see, if you hear the voice from heaven, God telling you, the voice of thunder, this is my son, hear ye him. Mm. Damn it all, after five years after that, or six months after that, or five days later, you are in prison. And this is John you're talking about. Uh, John, yes. And John says he is not sure. He sends his disciples to verify from Jesus yeah. whether he is the person that yeah. that they are waiting for. Okay, I'll that means you. now, in other words, this is Matthew thumb sucking from somewhere. This thing didn't happen. You don't think that he that he was there at the time? No, no. I said now all this is all concoctions of the story because if it is. It's not consistent because once you hear the voice of God telling you, hear ye him, listen to my son. Yeah. And then he's still not sure. Where, where is that? Is it in Matthew as well, isn't it? You see, that's why I said, look, if your priest was here, whether he's a priest or a barber, you know, when I'm talking to him, man, he should be able to visualize his book. Yeah. And now everything that I'm telling you, I can open it and show it to you. But now, you're giving this 75-year-old man too much hard work. Apologies. Is it's just, so I'm very when I'm trying to learn everything as fast as I can, but I can't. I'm only human after all. You see, my son, 
I can also make excuses. I'm a 75 year old machine. You know, I can't remember. Look, I, I could have given you a reference blah, 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 just like that. I could. I can't do that. I have to start lo looking. That means you're wasting my valuable time. Yes, you I see. Apologize. And in other words, that you are showing ignorance of your Bible. You are ignorant. In other words, because when, if you refer to me, I say, look, Muhammad did such and such a thing, or the Quran says such and such a thing. Either I confirm it, or when I deny it, it's not there. I said, look, nothing like that in my book. You see? So if you show me, I should be prepared to chop, have my head chopped off. You know? Under the guillotine. I said, mm -hmm. that means I'm prepared to become a Christian. If you show me what you are telling me in my Quran, I'll become a Christian. Like for example, it says the Quran condemns Trinity. The Quran. It says, Wala taqulu thalasa. Don't say Trinity. Intahu khairul lakum. This is, stop it, it'll be better for you. Innam Allahu ilam wahid. For your Allah is one Allah, he's not three in one. That's what the Quran says. But suppose you told me, so look, your Quran does say about Trinity, that you have to believe in Trinity. So I tell you nothing like that in my book, my son. So you tell me, look, uncle, if I show you in your book, then I said, look, I'll become a Christian. Fair? Yes. If you can show me in my book yeah. that, that I'm so cocksure about my book, that there's no such thing, because it's to the contrary. He said, don't say Trinity. Don't believe in Trinity. This is, stop it. This is not the teaching of God, that mm -hmm. he is a triune God. See? And that verse, the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7, is also thrown out of uh, the Revised Standard Version. Do you know that? In all the modern translations, thrown out as a fabrication. Or oh, Trinity? Yes. For there are three that bear record in heaven. See, the Trinity has never been in the Bible anywhere. Right, right. So now, in other words, now the Christian world are Trinitarians. Unless you are not. Well, I've, I've looked at the Trinity. Um, you, you, can I just quickly explain the way I see it? Yes, my son. In um, the beginning, like it says in, in Genesis, um, just pass my Bible. Please, can I read it in a moment? No, no, no. I, 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 I can tell you. It says, let us create man. Us. No, I wasn't, I wasn't referring to that. In the first verse of the Bible, yeah. it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yeah. The word God there in Hebrew is Elohim. And Elohim means gods. Did you know that? Oh, Elohim yeah. means gods. Literally, the word Elohim in the Hebrew language means gods. Yeah. But you translate it as God, singular. Though in Hebrew it is plural. So, the clever guy who wants to prove Trinity, he tells me that, look, you see, that word is plural. And in Hebrew, there are three, this, singular, dual, and plural. Yeah. Two and more is plural. Two and more. So they have a verb, an, a, a noun for singular. The same thing, dual, dual, if a two. Plural. And plural. There are three different words, singular, dual, and plural. Where is this Hebrew? Hebrew and Arabic. See? We have three types of singular, dual, and plural. Hebrew, there's no, there's no, word, there were no, what do you call it, words like a and the. I don't know. Ancient Hebrew as writings, then there's never anything like that. This is what I've been told by a guy who's a historian on it. You see, the singular, so the word, the Elohim, is plural. Okay. Right. So this is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I says, no. You see, Eastern languages, including my own, we have two types of plurals. We have plural of numbers and plural of respect. In Arabic, in Hebrew, in my language, Urdu, Gujarati, in every language of the East, we have two types of plurals. Yeah. You see? When I ask you in my language, your name, I will say, Aap ka kya naam hai? Aap in Urdu means all. But I'm asking, what is thy name? But I don't say thy, I say, Tera kya naam hai? It sounds disrespectful. Because now, if I ask you, what is thy name? So you ask me back, what is thy name? So I don't want you to talk like that. Yeah. So I want to teach you how to talk respectfully. So I said, Aapka kya naam hai? What is the name of you all? But you understand I'm talking about you. Singularly. Singular. But I, I use the word... In respect. Plural, you see? So you will ask me in turn, Aapka kya naam hai? What is your name, all your name? So I'll tell you my name is Ahmad. Right? So I'm trying to teach you respect by using yeah. plural of respect. In the Quran also, we have the same thing. The Quran says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun That it is for us to send down the revelation and it is for us to protect it. Salaam. 
So you might want to know. So you might. So you might want to ask. Is it this as in the Quran? Who is this? Muhammad, Gabriel, and God? I said, no. So it's who? I said God. But he said it is as. So the we have created the heavens and the earth. Who is this we? Muhammad, Gabriel, and God? I said no. It's God. But he said it says we. Who is this we? I said no. In our language, there are two types of plurals. We use this plural of respect for God. We use we and as. We meaning the one and only. Yeah. See. So now similarly in the Hebrew language, the same position. But now you in your language because you didn't have it. You didn't have that. So now you are now picking up from a Jewish book, you know, Jewish terminology, metaphors and similes, yeah. and you're trying to understand it literally. That creates the problems. Like son of God. I'm asking the Christian, how many sons has he got? One. One. You see, that's the answer. Everybody says. But I said, you haven't been reading your Bible. You see, in the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 3, it says, And the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. And they took them to wife all that they chose. Verse 4 or 6. So, and when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and had sex with them, and bore children to them, they, they became great men of all men of renown. How many sons did he have? Many. Then in the book of Exodus, God says, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. In the book of Jeremiah, he says, Ephraim is my son, even my firstborn. In the book of Psalm, God speaks to David and he says, I will declare a decree unto thee that thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. And in the New Testament, we are told, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Meaning, every Tom, Dick and Harry, if you follow the will and plan of God, you are a godly person. In the language of the Jew, you are a son of God. Yeah. So, you said just now that God has only one son, whereas he's got sons by the tons in your Bible. But you are ignorant. You are like a donkey with the blinkers on. You are only made to see that one and you don't see all the others. He's got them sons by the tons. Solomon is his son. Adam is his son in your Bible. And Adam the son of God. But you didn't read that. So, could any of the sons of God that you just spoken about, all these sons in, in Genesis and Exodus, then, uh, did any of them do what Jesus did? What did Jesus do? What did he do? All the miracles that he did while he was alive no, and then he was crucified. Jesus says miracles are no proof that the man is even a true prophet of God. He said, Jesus says, for they shall arise many false prophets and false Christs who will show you great signs and wonders. Yeah. If it were possible to deceive the very elect, his chosen ones, even yeah. they can be deceived. So if a false prophet if a false messiah can perform miracles, it is not a test of a true one. So come on, now what? That's what Jesus is talking about prophets in these days. That's what Jesus was talking about. So the, if the false prophets can do perform miracles, yeah. it is not a test. And John the Baptist, I told you just a little while ago, that he was the greatest of the Israelite prophets, but he performed no miracles. According to Jesus, he is the greatest. Greater than Moses and prophet David and Solomon. Jesus, but Jesus was not a prophet. What was he? What was he? He was the Messiah, the Son of God. Now, what is a Messiah? What is a Messiah? What does Son of God Redeemer. mean? What does Son of God mean? You see, I said, look, you don't know the Hebrew language, my He's been created from God, a part of God, set aside, so that He can come down to earth and redeem all mankind of all, all the sin and hatred and the, the anger. And oh, the was he born in the stable to a Jewish girl? Yes. But you say he came from heaven. How did he come from heaven? I already call it divine, I don't know, the fancy words. No, 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 no. Look, did he come out of his womb, mother's womb, yes. with all the filth and the muck that made his mother impure for seven days? According to Luke, she had to be purified. Do you know that? Uh, you are no, no, Luke, man, yes. chapter 3. She had to be purified from the childbirth. That means the pure and holy God coming into the world makes his mother impure. Does it make sense? Pure and holy God being born makes his mother impure. Does that make sense to you? I don't know if you're taking impure and a little bit of No, no. Did he come out of his mother's womb? Mm -hmm. Because Luke tells us when he was eight days old, he was circumcised and named Jesus by the angel when he was in his mother's womb. Yeah. Was he in his mother's womb? Yes. Right. How did he come out from there? Well, by normal. Same way. like you and me. Yeah. Right. Suppose you were a nurse 2,000 years ago and this helpless little creature was coming out of his mother's womb and you're helping. A male nurse, you. Hmm? Can you for one moment think that's your Jehovah coming out of the womb, your God that? Can you for one moment think that that is your God coming out of the womb with all the filth and the muck? 
And if he'd arrived on a silver and gold chariot, come down in, in storms of fire, would you have believed he was of God? Of course, of course you would have. Man, damn it all, you conquered the world. And Everybody would have bowed down to him. But he came out of a woman. It's so simple, that's what God could have done. Moment. You see, the thing is this night, he was born of a woman's womb, like anybody else. He was circumcised on the eighth day. The Bible says that. Yeah. Circumcised. You know what circumcision, of course, you know. Yeah. You nearly, you were nearly circumcised. Yeah. But if you were really circumcised, you would have remembered at the age of 16. You see, they have to catch you by your... There's nobody can circumcise a child without holding the little child by his... Yeah. And to loosen the skin. Foreskin, right? Foreskin. And circum means right round and size means to cut, to, yeah. cut it, to cut it off. But you can't do that with your mouth. You can't say circumcised and the guy gets circumcised. You have to catch the little boy by his... Somebody had to hold your God, Jesus, by his... To circumcise him. Yeah, I'll say. Your God, your God, somebody holding you by his... He came to earth as a man for crying out loud. Damn it, hey. look, 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 go on. If you, God gave you the power to become a cockroach, suppose, suppose, yeah. Yeah? and you chose a little experiment, you're going to have a little fun, huh? yeah. you become a cockroach and start running around, <laughs> and I managed to crush you. I managed to crush yeah. you. Can anybody charge me for murder? No, of course not. Why not? Because I was you, you didn't know you were standing on me. You Damn it all, look, you chose to be a cockroach, you are a cockroach, I killed a cockroach. Yeah, not you killed the cockroach, you didn't kill me. No, right. So the thing is, if God becomes a man, he's not God anymore. The, the person who's eating food and... No, no, if eating God and God, he can't be God. Why not? You believe in a God that eats God and an eating God? I think you're being a little blasphemous now. No, look, your Bible says that he is a, he is a spiritual being. He says yeah. God is spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. Yeah. Right. So now you are telling me now that this is God. He used to eat food, your Jesus. He used to drink milk from his mother's breast. He used to wet his napkins. Your God, wetting his napkins. Your God eating and... Yeah. Huh? And your God, you call him God. Man. House. He's defeating the whole purpose of why he came to earth. He came to earth so that he could live as a man, be tempted as a man, through, through a period of time, and... And, and he failed. Look. He, he didn't fail, honestly, look, man. Look, look he, he, he destroyed those 2,000 pigs, do you remember? Yeah, I'll say. Right. Now, look, go on you. If you can heal a man, you know, the transplant. See, yeah. the man needs a transplant of a pig's heart to save his life. Yeah. Do you kill 2,000 pigs to do that? No. Hmm? Only one now, part. Jesus Christ wanted to heal one person, he kills 2,000 pigs. Does that make sense to you? Uh, he take it right out of context again. What context? The man was demon possessed. He right. said the demon isn't the pigs. What, he could, what, what are you expecting to? You said right. to the man next door. No, no. If he must, send him into one pig. Because if the, a, a million demons can be in one person, they can be transported into a, a, a one pig. Can't they? A million demons can be, can be occupied in your body. Yeah. That um, that that um, million yeah. demons, I can take them out and put into a pig. Why should I? Relevant. So what if you put them into ten pigs or a thousand pigs or one pig? Shh. Look, those pigs belong to somebody, didn't they? They didn't belong to the Jews. I don't no, know. No, no, no. Look, I think it's irrelevant. What do you isn't, mean? It, isn't it relevant whether you send in a one pig or twenty? <laughs> no, Two thousand. Seriously. Is it, is it, a, is it a, dif a difference whether he sends it into one pig or twenty pigs? Or two thousand, or two thousand. Agreed socially, you know, that man who owned those t a thousand pigs, two thousand pigs, right. uh, two thousand. Agreed socially, that man who owned two thousand pigs is now two thousand pigs less. Right, so that did Jesus reward the guy? Did he pay them for it? Does it say he didn't? He didn't, because they went ran to the village and they brought a gang and chased him from there. Your God was chased out for destroying those two thousand pigs. And the man that was, you got reading your Bible. Man that was demon possessed, who was, Look, who was nothing. That man, man, but to save that man, you destroyed somebody's 2,000 pigs. You are a bloody loony, a vandal man. Then he's hungry. Go and he's hungry. And he runs to a fig tree. Hmm? And he finds no figs. So he kills the fig tree. Does that make sense to you? There's a vandal man. A man is a vandal, you go and destroy somebody's fig tree. Fig trees just didn't drop from heaven. Look, in season it would have gone fruit. It was out of season. Your God didn't even know when figs were in season or were not in season. You today, you go to a fruit shop and you say, want a bunch of leeches. They'll ask you, where do you come from? He said, I come from England. I said, no, no, no. My, sir, you see leeches around, June, around December. Around Christmas time, you'll get leeches. Yeah. Right. So you say, oh, I'm sorry. I thought, you know, I've heard about leeches, leeches, so I asked. But you're a local man. 
and you go and ask for leeches and there's new leeches there in the shop and you punch the guy and you, you upset his, uh, his, uh, his yeah. food then you are a loony man, you are a vandal Jesus Christ he goes and destroys a fig tree for not bearing fruit out of season it's a lunacy of the highest order he destroys somebody's pigs, two thousand then he calls his mother woman he calls his mother woman, he says what have I to do with thee my time is not yet this is the same word he will use for a prostitute in his language, is there no word for mother? There's no word for mother in his language? What do you mean? Every human language, man, the first word that child utters is ma, um, ma, ma. Yeah. And you mean in Hebrew there's no word for mother? There probably is, I don't know. No, no, then he told the very next word, he says, woman, look at your son. And he tells the son, John, he says, look, look at your mother. He used the word mother. Right, so he knew the word mother. But now, he uses the word woman for his mother, which is the same word he uses for a prostitute. Does it, befit, does it befit a man of God? Addressing his mother, a woman. Is that how you call your mother? You call your mother your father's wife. Is that what you call her? What do you call her? Do you call her ma? Mom? Mom. Huh? You don't call her father's wife. She's your father's wife. Isn't she? Your mother is your father's wife. Oh, I hope so. She is your father's wife, but you don't call her father's wife. You don't call her woman, do you? You won't call him a, a woman? No. No. But then, this... Ma this but I'm Jesus Christ, I had no... So, so Jesus Christ has a right? The woman who carried him for nine months? Oh, he is you, God. So, she carried him, she was not a goddess. Okay. Man, she, Aren't she, those things been put into the Bible to show you that Jesus was not God? That's it. He was a prophet. Because if he was God, he would know that he would get fig on that tree. Right. I think those things are put in there. And I, I have looked what little I've looked in the Bible. Uh, I have found nowhere where Jesus said, I am God, worship me. No, that would have been... If, if I came, if walked in this room today and said, I am God, worship me, you'd think I'm a nutcase. So of why? course you would be a nutcase. You see? No, but now if, no, no, but if, said, worship no, me, no, no, if, if he's God, then he's a bloody hypocrite. He's talking with tongue in cheek. If he's God, he must say so, I'm God. If you are God, then you're not afraid. My son, am I right? Well, he's not afraid, he went no. to the cross. That is crying like a woman. You remember? He is crying, he's wailing like a woman, he's crying in the garden. Well, wouldn't you, if I told you at 3 o'clock this afternoon, you're going to be crucified? <laughs> no, no. For a cause... If you're God, you wouldn't be. No, no, no. If you're a God. No, well, a son he, of no but he, was, he came on earth as a man. A servant of God. He was a man. There are of millions... Of was wailing. He was going no, to go and go and go and go and There are millions of Chinese who have gone to the slaughter with a smile on their faces. Lord Nelson. You heard about Lord Nelson, yeah. right? While he was dying, you know, he said, Thank God that I have done my duty. Hmm? Yeah. This man is crying, man, even on the cross is crying. He says, Ella, Ella, Lama Sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Yes, if God forsook him, that means he's an unbeliever. That's death. That is spiritual death. If God forsakes you, you are dead. You agree? Yeah, spiritually. Spiritually you are dead. And that's the really thing that matters. God told Adam, He says, The day that thou eatest the fruit thereof, Thou shalt surely die. You remember? Die spiritually, he did. He didn't say that, but that's what he said. No, but that's what he meant. That's right. In other words, now, spiritually, you will be separated from me. Yeah. Right. That means spiritual death. Spiritual death. Yeah. Jesus was separated from the Father spiritually. Spiritually, he was dead. Yeah. That means spiritually, he was an unbeliever. You see, when you are spiritually dead, you are an unbeliever. I've seen that, but I you, agree no, with it. If you are spiritually deprived from God, separated from God, you are dead, you are a kafir, you are a kafir, you are an unbeliever. If God separates from me, He rejects me, then I am an unbeliever. Yeah, I just, I... <laughs> you see? I'm no, not going to renounce my Christianity. And no, no, you, that, 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 that nobody asked you, that you're done, done already. I, I hear what you're saying, my, my, my whole point to round up what you're saying is, I agree with you in a lot of ways, the Bible contradicts itself or seems to contradict itself. My point is that the men that wrote the Bible were not perfect. I don't think God sort of sat down on the guy's shoulder and said, you know, it is here, okay, and then told him word for word what to write. I think if I see something happening in the street and I wrote an account of it, and that gentleman on the other side of the street saw the same thing and he gave an account, would our account be the same? You see... Basically, maybe is, the general, is, the very, very basic general outline of the story would be the same. contradicting. You see, once you are contradicting themselves. No, no, listen, listen. The book says that Solomon had 4,000 stalls of horses. Yeah. Another guy says he's inspired by God, he says he had 40,000 stalls of horses. 
4 and 40. Does that make a difference to you? No. Difference of 36,000. Do you know that? No. Can I huh? sure. Right. And now the Jews, they didn't know the zero. They didn't know the zero. They wrote it in words. They wrote 4,000 in Hebrew, F-O-U-R, 4. Yeah. They wrote 40, F-O-R-T-Y, 40,000. Yeah. So there's a difference of 36,000. Who is inspired out of the two? Hmm? Then this book says, one guy, one guy here, you read there, it says, he says that that guy is an Ishmaelite, and another says he's an Israelite, the same fellow. But if I told you that Muhammad was a Jew, an Israelite, that guy tells you Muhammad was an Ishmaelite, an Arab. But Ishmael is, is, is Ishmael Ishmael. The children of Ishmael are the Ishmaelites. The children of Israel are the Israelites. Yeah, but I right? think now, uh, Israel, not Israel, what, what's the word? Ishmael Jacob. and, and some else in Isaac, the same. Isaac, Isaac, Isaac. Oh, yeah, it's the same person, eh? No, 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 oh, no, no. It means no. the same. Ishmael and Isaac. No, man, there too. There was a poster downstairs at a cafe I saw and it had all the Muslim names and then names in brackets all the other way around. No, no, whatever that is. Uh, Jacob no. was... Uh, Yago. No, yeah. no, that means that how we pronounce. We pronounce Abraham, Yago. Abraham. Yusuf, like that. Yusuf. We say, you say Joseph, we say Yusuf, is the same person, but that's the way of pronouncing. Yeah. Dialect, dialect, you see. But now, if I'm telling you that Jesus was an Arab, that guy said, you say Jesus was a Jew. Yeah. One of us is sp not speaking the truth. Yeah. In this case, we know who's not speaking the truth. I'm a liar. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. But suppose we didn't know, we didn't know, we didn't know about a fellow, and you said he was Jew, and I say he was an Arab. Yeah. Both of us could be liars. Both of us could be liars. Am I right? Yeah. But in the, our case about Jesus, you are speaking the truth and I am speaking a lie. Yeah. Right. So now you open the book. Open the book. 1 Chronicle 2.17. Mm -hmm. It tells you that the guy they mentioned, he is an is Ishmaelite. 2 Samuel 17, verse 25, it says he is an Israelite. Now, coming from the same God, does God know what he's talking about? Does he know the difference between Ishmaelite and Israelite? Does he know the difference? Does he know? He, God doesn't know. That means he's no God. He's a man sitting on some, some throne. He's telling you, sir, write down my son Jesus is a Jew. And he's telling that man, sir, write down my son Jesus is an Arab. Can they think well, originally from the same God, both these statements? And to say that one of those prophets that wrote it down was, was wrong? Or both of them are wrong. One of them is wrong, definitely. That's your book. And I show you a hundred like that. Jesus says, Jesus says, He says, of those that have given me, I have lost none. None means not one. Not one. Yeah. In the next chapter he says, of those that you have given me, I have lost only one. Now the, the difference between one and none. Where is that? <laughs> John, John 17, 12. John chapter 17 verse 12. John 17 12. Read it, my son. While I was with them, I kept them safe by the power of your name, the name you gave me. I protected them, and none of the, one of them was lost except the man who was bound to be lost, so that the scripture might come true. Right. The same John chapter 17, he says he lost only one, and here he says he has lost none. The difference between none and one, you know how many percent is that? Just, I'm just going to read the context of this because I actually read this long time ago. Now. I won't remember it. Okay. Um, just look at the context of the I'm just, just going to wrap these yeah. two down. Because yeah. so I've actually got a lot of work to do and I don't want to waste Me your time. Me too, I'm also a very busy man. But I sacrificed my whole morning. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. 
That's stealing. That's stealing. You have a toilet. You say, you took that Bible out. Yeah, no, that it's is, not Bible. That is stealing. Stealing. That is stealing, yes. Okay. You say, please look, may I ask for my Bible back? You took it from there, that is stealing. I just absented myself for two seconds, and this is what you do. You are a man of spirit, a spiritual person. You said, I renounce Christianity. I'm quoting your words. And he says, throw this in the dustbin. I was joking. I was frustrated. No, no, that's what you said. Now you must be a man of your word. As a spiritual person, you had no right to pick it up. Okay. That was stealing. Please may I have my Bible back. No, no. Please, it to me. no. Gave it Someone to me. Gave it to me. I want my Bible. No. Yes. Wait, no. Let's send it. Nice. Bye. Bye. Is there a toilet I could go to quickly? Yes. Uh, one second. Show him the toilet. Thanks. Mr. E.B. Lockhart. Oh, he did. Yes. So he did. We were searching for him. So I would just take from going to Mars. Yeah, we're going now, yes. Okay. You can join us. And then... And I then want to go there, but the thing is, I've still got a lot of work to left to do. Um, so I'm going to come some other time. You again, come, very you come, soon. You come about half past twelve. Half past twelve. And then prayer time, you can go down and watch and come and have lunch with us. Okay. You'll enjoy the Korean rice as well. Yeah. You see? <laughs> you know, we, we didn't offer you anything at all today. You said you had no, some tea, coffee before you came. Coffee but next around. time, curry and rice. Okay, you know, great. Inshallah. Um, I'll I'll come in in the morning and and make a make an appointment. No, no, no. You don't have to morning. make an appointment. You just come along any weekday. Any yes. Come here. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this is that uh, I had an unbelievable morning, man. This is like the time of my life. I really appreciate everything you done for me. Thank you. And my Bible, please. No. Mm -hmm. I need that Bible. No. My mom and dad gave it to me for Christmas. The Christian, you see, I had another Christian from a university after one of my lectures in the city hall. Yeah. And he tells me, he said, look, I don't agree with you. I said, you have a right, what, what you don't agree with? He heard my lecture. He can tell me nothing. But I don't agree with you. See, Christ is the way. I said, look, man, his teachings, you can't practice them. He said, no, I can. I said, look, Jesus said, it has been said by them of old time, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, this is not evil. He who strikes you on the right cheek, give him the other. Yeah. So are you prepared to? That I strike you on the right cheek and you give the other. Yeah. He said, yes. Right. Come on. No, I don't want to. No, no, no. He, he said, okay. right, he's prepared to. Yeah. That means he can follow Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right? So I withdrew. That means he won the first round. See, I didn't want to dirty my hands. <laughs> That's huh? not so clear yet. Then I said, Jesus also said, said, he who comes to borrow of you, turn up. And he said, he says, if a person takes away a uh, coat, you give him a cloak also. Mm. Are you prepared to do that? He said, yes. He had a lumber jacket on. I said, the lumber jacket. So he took it out. Yeah. I said, the jersey as well. The jersey was wearing under the lumber jacket. He took the jersey out. Then I said, no, Jesus said, he who comes to borrow of you, turn down not away. So he who borrows... He who comes to borrow of you, turn down not away. Yeah. Means respond to him, give it to him. Give it to him. how much you got in your pocket? I said, how much have you got in your pocket? He said, you need it. He said, I got, don't look at my suit. <laughs> I said, I need it. Come, take it out. No, he couldn't. He couldn't. You see, now his religion went only up to so far. Yeah. That he was prepared to do. He was prepared to give his jacket, lumber jacket and his jersey. Now I said, the money. Come on, come on. Let's see how, you, how far you can follow him. Yeah. So, no, no, no. That he can't part with his money. Huh? So this is where he could go. Now he's about to go. He says, I want my jacket. I said, what for? What for? Damn it, you gave it to me. That means you're only showing her, scoring her point. Yeah. See? So I said, no, 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 no. So the, the bloom and follow. He cried. He cried. I said, you won't get it. And he didn't get it. I said, give it to the poor. Yeah. You won't get it. So in other words, now man, to me, a man is a man of his word. He's the right. I give my life. You must be prepared to give your life. Right, yeah, we're going to pray now. Uh, Namaz, we're knocking off. I need my Bible. That's, and my mom and dad gave it to me, even if it has a, uh, what do you call it, has sentimental reasons. Right, come, let's move. You can't. Come. If you threw it away, it's gone. He told me, throw it in the dustbin. And my mom and dad are going to kill me if I lose that. Right. Uh, 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 you couldn't organize something with your dad, could you please?
tomorrow, so come in tomorrow. Okay, uh, I, I don't want to use that. I'm, I'm, my mom and dad, they'll kick me out the house. Okay, so I got a prayer. You lock up for prayer? Yeah, no, I didn't. <coughs> Bible that he, he threw gay and denounced Christianity. Uh, he said that it's. He feels that uh, if you can spare him the courtesy of giving him the Bible, uh, you can feel free in talking of father. Let me tell you, <laughs> you don't get offended. No, no, my loud he, speaking. That's his not nature. to frighten you. No, no, I understand your position. Well, you know, position. I talk, I shout, and all that, you know. Like, he like I, that's what I do. He treats you like a son. That's why he shouts. He treats you like a son. The same thing. Father to a son. Thank you. Oh, yes. yeah. No, no. What I have a proposition for you. I don't want okay. to deprive you of that Bible. <laughs> okay, thank you. There's one small condition. Yes. I want you to be your pastor. Okay. To prove to me that the Bible is God's word. That's all.